Hey there, welcome to English for Everyone. My name is Lisa. Today we're going to learn how to avoid some common mistakes. Let's get started. This is not correct. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a mistake in English language that I still make, that you make, like every English language learner makes it a lot because it's an easy mistake to make. And this is when we use the word very too many times when we talk. So if you're interested how to get rid of this mistake, please continue watching this video. First, it's not a mistake to use the word very. It's a very good word. If you want to sound like a native speaker, do not stop using the word very. It sounds natural. And native speakers use this word every day. You've been very, very bad. And that's exactly why today is going to be very, very hard for me. And we did. And we waited and it was very, very cold. It was very, very good. I'm very, very happy. Help me. And very, very good things can come to you. It's very beautiful and very cold and you're not allowed to touch anything. I am very, very, very happy for you. Because he's a very, very, very old man. I just want to make it absolutely very, very crystal clear. It is my job to keep this very, 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 very quiet. Has a very bad temper. She was a field nurse at Eep. Very, very brave woman. So we'll use that to punch our way out. Give all of you a very, very good chance. You're being very brave. You're being very, very brave. You're a very, very brave man. So we have to try to be very, 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 very still. Picture me. I'm a girl who's very, very bad. We're going to talk about Shakespeare as someone who writes something very interesting. So remember, it is correct to use the word very, but this is not correct. Today we're going to talk about a mistake in English language. It's not correct to say in English language. You have to say in English or in the English language, but it's not correct to say in the English language. This is also not correct. Uh, here in America, especially in San Francisco, people love dogs. And I think the city has more dogs than children. And whenever I walk outside, I meet a cute dog and all of the dogs are really well trained. So uh, they would approach you and jump on you and lick you. And I would always say, your dog is very cute. And I'm tired of this phrase myself because this is like a really limited vocabulary and there are so many words that I can use instead. For instance, this is also like for me guys right now because I really want to get rid of this very cute phrase. I can say your dog is adorable. Adorable? <laughs> <laughs> I can also use the word admirable. Admirable. And I can also say your dog is lovely. Lovely. Instead of saying very cute all the time. First, it's not correct to say meet a dog. And whenever I walk outside, I meet a cute dog. We have to use the verb see. When an animal appears, we say, I see a dog. I see a cat. But it's not correct to say, meet a dog. For example, yesterday I went for a walk and I saw a deer in the forest. It's not correct to say, I met a deer. I have to say, I saw a deer. Remember, in the present see, in the past saw. And now let's talk about the word admirable. It's not correct to say your dog is admirable. I would always say your dog is very cute. And I'm tired of this phrase myself because this is like a really limited vocabulary and there are so many words that I can use instead. For instance, this is also like for me guys right now because I really want to get rid of this very cute phrase. I can say your dog is adorable. I can also use the word admirable instead of saying very cute all the time. The word admirable comes from the verb admire, and we admire people, not animals. Like in this example. Listen, I don't personally know Marina, and even though we sometimes might have different views about how to teach English, I absolutely admire and respect her for being a prolific YouTube creator, a very successful entrepreneur, a mom, and also showing up unapologetically despite the criticism. So remember, we admire people, not animals. Nobody says, your dog is admirable. If you see a dog and you like the dog, you think the dog is very cute. You can say, your dog is very cute. It sounds natural. And that's what native speakers say. Good dog. <laughs> very cute dog. 
Oh, so cute. And wow, your dog is very cute, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, you know what? He he actually just woke up. So you now, uh, right, right before I talk about challenges, he can say hi. Say hi, Pinky. Say hi, Pinky. Oh. <laughs> he just woke up from his nap, so he's like half asleep. Oh, okay, you can go goodness. back to sleep. You can go that back to sleep. That is very cute. <laughs> you might think that YouTube is not a school. But that's not what she says. She claims that she's a teacher. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Marina and I'm your English language teacher today. Today, we're gonna practice and we're gonna learn how Americans pronounce words that we learn. So if you're interested in sounding like an American person, please continue watching this video. If you're interested in speaking English as a native speaker without any mistakes, continue watching this video. This is so a free content platform, not a school. It is not correct to say, this is so a free content platform. Write in the comments how to say it correctly. This is not correct. Now, my team and I have created a course called From Intermediate to Advanced, which is a 30-day course, and it can actually be taken in two ways, and the second is a more fun way. So the first way to take it is just to watch classes and make homework. You would need around 30 minutes a day, maybe an hour a day, to be fully present in the course, to take the classes, to make your homework. It's not correct to say, make homework. We have to use the verb do, do homework. For example, I do homework every day. And right now he's doing his homework. But remember, it's not correct to use the verb make. We have to say, do homework. This is not correct. But it doesn't add anything extra and it's just taking out your space. I cannot say it's just taking out your space. The phrasal verb taking out or take out is completely different. It means to remove, for example, take out the trash. In this case, we need the phrasal verb take up. Take up space. And we don't need to express possession with your space. We just say take up space. So in the continuous form, it's just taking up space. Take up is the phrasal verb we use to talk about using space without a good reason. For example, I have this old TV in my living room. I never use it, I never watch TV, it just sits there. It's just taking up space. I cannot say it's just taking out space. No, it's just taking up space. Let's practice. I never use the TV, so is it just taking up space? That's right, it's just taking up space. I need to get rid of it. This is also not correct. This is a very good class. This is a very good dress. This is a very good city. Now, how can we replace it? Instead of saying very good, you can say it's splendid. Splendid. Don't say splendid. Splendid is not commonly used in conversational English in America. It's a word. It exists. Maybe they use it in England. It sounds English to me, but we don't say splendid. That's splendid. Nobody talks like that. Don't use this word. Say very good. Say great. Say terrific, but don't say splendid. Also, don't say this. This movie is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. In American English, brilliant does not mean very good. Brilliant means very smart. So if you say the movie is brilliant, that means the movie is smart, not the movie is very good. For example, my children. My children are very smart, so I can say they're brilliant. So I can say my children are very smart or my children are brilliant. Let's practice. What do you think? Do you think these kids are brilliant? That's right. They're brilliant. They're very smart. Also, don't say this. And this is a spoken English word, so don't use it in essays. But in America, it's very widely used, especially among young people. Don't use the word lit. I don't use it. I don't know anyone who does. If you use lit, you're going to sound like a teenager. It's an example of youth slang. Slang used by young people, not adults. If you're a teenager and you want to sound like a teenager, then you can say lit. But if you're not, don't say lit. It's much better to say very good. This is also not correct. Something that I also use very often when I'm in Russia, very cold. As we've already mentioned, we can substitute it with freezing. Freezing outside. We can say it's chilly outside. It's chilly. Chilly does not mean very cold. Chilly means a little cold. If I say it's chilly outside, that means get a light jacket. It's not very cold, it's just a little cold. 
it's chilly. Example, in fall, it's usually chilly in fall. In winter, it's very cold, but in fall, it's chilly. Let's practice. Is it chilly in fall? That's right, it's chilly in fall. A little cold. Not very cold. This is also not correct. We can say it's frosty. Frosty. Frosty is an adjective to describe something with frost on it. Example, a glass. This is a frosty glass because it has frost on it. Frost is the noun. It's the name of the stuff. Little ice particles. It's called frost. And if you have frost on a glass, you can describe the glass and say it's a frosty glass. I like to drink beer from a frosty glass. Let's practice. What do you like to drink from a frosty glass? Very good. This is also not correct. It's also very important to do something with your hands so your brain remembers what's the right way. I cannot say so your brain remembers what's the right way. When I say what's, contraction of what is, that's a question structure. And if I say so your brain can remember, I cannot use a question structure because I'm not asking a question. So I have to move is to the end. I can say, so your brain remembers what the right way is. But we can make this much easier. Don't say what and don't say is. Just say, so you can remember the right way. So it's correct to say, so your brain can remember the right way. Or even better, so you can remember the right way. But I cannot say, so your brain can remember what's the right way. It's like saying, I can't remember where's the bathroom. I can't say this because where's is a question structure. I would have to move is and say, I can't remember where the bathroom is. Let's practice. Can you remember where the bathroom is? That's right. I can't remember where the bathroom is either. Let's go find it. Today we're going to learn some important mistakes to avoid. So let's get started. First, this is not correct. Hey Marina, you all right? Hi, yeah, why won't I be? If someone asks you the question, you all right? And you're confused by the question, you cannot say, why won't I be? In this case, we have to say, why wouldn't I be? Pronunciation, why wouldn't I be? You see the NT in wouldn't is between vowels, so you don't really hear the T. Not why wouldn't I be, but why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't I be? Why wouldn't I be coming? I'll be ready. Why wouldn't I be? This is also not correct. Progress. Oh, so you pronounce it in the British way. Americans should say progress. Yeah, I, progress right? <laughs> I still have that. Progress. Progress. Yeah. <laughs> You're learning me that in the American. Progress. That's right, Lucy. In America, we say progress. We don't say progress. The American pronunciation is progress with the short ah sound, like hot and stop. Progress. Let's hear that last part again. Progress. Yeah. <laughs> You're learning me that in the American. Progress. This is not correct. You cannot say, You're learning me American. We have to use the verb teach. You're teaching me American English. Learn is the verb for the student. The student learns and the teacher teaches. We cannot switch them around. So Lucy is not learning her American English. Lucy is teaching her American English. Thank you for teaching me this lesson. This is also not correct. So we're going to talk about differences between British and American English. So today we're going to compare two versions and, uh, you know, you don't have to speak any of those. But In this case, I cannot say you don't have to speak any of those because we're talking about two versions, the American accent or the British accent. When you have two things, you cannot say any of those. When you have two things, you have to say either. So correctly, it should be, you don't have to speak either one of these. Or you can just say, you don't have to speak either one. You can speak with some other different accent. You don't have to speak with either one. I cannot say you don't have to speak with any of those. Example, somebody offers me Coke or Pepsi, and I don't want Coke, and I don't want Pepsi. So I say, I don't want either one. I don't like either one. Because there's two, I have to say either. I cannot say any. I don't like any of them. Any of them is when you have more than two. More than two options. So the question, which one do you like? Coke or Pepsi? And you respond, I don't like either one. Or, 
I don't like either one of them. Let's practice. Do you like Coke or Pepsi? That's right. I don't like either one. I don't like either one of them. Or I can use the negative, neither. But I put neither at the beginning of the sentence. Example, neither one is healthy. Coke is not healthy and Pepsi is not healthy. So I can say neither one is healthy. Let's practice. Which one is healthy, Coke or Pepsi? That's right, neither one is healthy. They both have a lot of sugar. Did he look like either of these two guys here? Now there are only two things for you to do, and you're not going to like either one of them. I mean, you haven't heard anybody say anything about either one of these. Nope. Yes, I liked them both, and neither one of them was suicidal. You know, neither one of us is going to die if it doesn't happen for us. So I mentioned, when you have more than two, that's when you can use any. So let's practice with any. When we have three or more. Which one do you like? Coke, Pepsi, or Dr. Pepper? I don't like any of them. Because we have more than two, I need to use any. I don't like any of them. Let's practice. Which one do you like? Coke, Pepsi, or Dr. Pepper? That's right. I don't like any of them. Or I can use the negative form, none. But we put none at the beginning of the sentence. None of them. None of them are healthy. Example, you have Coke, Pepsi, and Dr. Pepper. Which one is healthy? And the answer is none. None of them. None of them are healthy. They all have a lot of sugar. So I start with the negative none. None of them are healthy. They're all bad for you. Let's practice. You have three options. Coke, Pepsi, or Dr. Pepper. Which one is healthy? That's right, none of them are healthy. They all have too much sugar. I really like you and I don't have any money or insurance or a valid credit card or any of those things, but I'll help you take care of this baby. You can be in a room with a hundred men and not like any of them. I've worked many jobs and none of them, none have been worth missing life. I've got eight children and none of them look like me. He has no real allies, only enemies, but none of them are as great as he. This is also not correct. Yeah, we just, like the regular word would be the oven. If you say stove, I would say it implies something fancier. Like, you know, in, in American homes, if you see a stove with red knobs, I don't remember, like the, this very fancy kind of oven brand. First, let's talk about pronunciation. The pronunciation is not oven, but oven. The first syllable makes a sound uh, like cup and up. Uh, uh. This is a relaxed sound. Your mouth is almost closed. Uh, uh, uh. Oven. Oven. So let's talk about the difference between oven and stove. Stove is not a fancy oven. A stove is not fancier than an oven. Sometimes we use these two words interchangeably in some situations. But basically, the stove is the top part, and the oven is the inside part. For example, I cook rice on the stove, and I bake cookies in the oven. So remember the prepositions, on the stove versus in the oven. And we see how the pronunciation of the changes to the, because it's before a vowel. We say in the, in the oven. Again, I cook rice on the stove and I bake cookies in the oven. And if you're talking about the whole appliance, it's more common just to say stove. Example, do you have a gas stove or an electric stove? I have an electric stove and I hate it. Let's practice. What are you cooking on the stove? Very good. And what are you baking in the oven? Very good. And by the way, do you have a gas stove or an electric stove? Very good. Oh, baby, don't ever put anything like this on the stove. I touched my arm on the stove and I got burned and I cried. In the oven on a pan. 
But the bacon's not going to be crisp if you bake it in the oven on a sheet. This is also not correct. Let's say this. I'm going to say this uh, the way I would say it. I met my mother on the tube. Well, I wouldn't say on the tube because we don't use the tube in, in the US. But anyways, on the tube, on the underground, on Tuesday. In American English, we do not say on the underground. That's in England. In England, it's called the underground or the tube. But in America, mostly we say subway, on the subway. Americans do not say on the underground. We say on the subway. Most cities in America that have a subway, it's referred to as the subway, take the subway. Some people say take the train. And in some cities, they call it the metro. But we especially use the metro when we're referring to other subway systems in other countries in Europe. For example, in France, it's called the metro. But in America, the most common word is subway. I'm going to take the subway to work. And he's going to take the subway to work. Let's practice. Is he going to take the subway to work? That's right. He's going to take the subway to work, not the underground. Telling us you killed those three young men on the subway? For your act. Didn't you hear what happened on the subway? Some clown got killed. A whip. Stay tuned for an update on the subway hijacking case. So I tried to take the subway. You can take the subway there, one of the lines. No, I think I'll take the subway. This is also not correct. What would you call hair that goes across your forehead like this? In British English, we would call it fringe. A fringe. Yeah, in American, it's bangs. But I also think people understand fringe because I would say both. In America, when we're talking about this haircut, this part of your hair, it's called bangs. I don't have any bangs. But she does. She has bangs. And we do not say both bangs and fringe. Fringe is British. In America, we don't say fringe. We only say bangs. She has bangs. I can say she has long bangs. Let's practice. Does she have long bangs? That's right. She has long bangs. So why don't we say fringe? Because in English, American English, fringe is something completely different. This is fringe. I can say the jacket has fringe. Or sometimes we say fringes. We use it in the singular and the plural. Both are correct. The little things that hang down are called fringe. The jacket has a lot of fringe. Let's practice. Does the jacket have a lot of fringe? That's right. The jacket has a lot of fringe. So in American English, bangs and fringe are completely different. Bangs are to refer to your hair, and fringe refers to the little things that hang down on your clothes. What would I look like with bangs? Just... Be adventurous, be spontaneous, just do it. Just do it, just do it, just do it. Never cut your own bangs. I learned this lesson three times. And also, I guess last year was when I cut my bangs and had this style for the first time. On Scrubs, it seemed to happen right around the time Elliot decided to cut her bangs. Uh, let's go ahead and take a close up look at the fringe. Here's the edge of the blanket. I've chosen to do the fringe in the same color as the last the top and bottom stripes. You don't have to. And this fringe is the same way that you do fringe for any project. Because it's made out of Heartland, we have fringe. So I have my four fringes attached. This is also not correct. So yeah, and I think water is, is the word that you can actually use to like check <laughs> who comes from where. Because in America, not only we say R in the end, water, we also like in America, not only we say are in the end is not correct. After not only, we have to use an inverted structure. That's a structure with a question, a question structure. You're not asking a question, but you have to use this structure. After not only. So the question structure is with do. Not only do we. Example, not only can he dance, but he can also sing. So positive. He can also sing. But after not only, I use a question structure. Not only can he. I switch. Not only can he dance, but he can also sing. Again, not only can he dance, but he can also sing. 
The position up also is important. We have to put it between the auxiliary and the verb. But he can also sing. So again, not only can he dance, but he can also sing. Let's practice. Can he sing or dance? That's right. Not only can he dance, but he can also sing. Or if I use a different structure, for example, he dances and he sings. And this is impressive, so I use this structure. Not only does he dance, but he also sings. See how I'm using the question structure? After not only, I use the auxiliary does to make the question structure. Again, you're not asking a question, but you have to use this inverted structure after not only. Again, not only does he dance, but he also sings. Let's practice. Does he sing or dance? That's right. Not only does he dance, but he also sings. Or we can talk about the future. He will dance and he will sing tonight. And this is impressive. So I start my idea with not only. Not only will he dance, but he'll also sing tonight. Again, I use a question structure after not only. Not only will he, not only will he dance, but he'll also sing tonight. We see that the position of also is important. We put it between the auxiliary and the verb. He'll also sing. He will, contraction, he'll. He'll also sing tonight. So again, not only will he dance, but he'll also sing tonight. Let's practice. Will he dance or sing tonight? That's right. Not only will he dance, but he'll also sing tonight. Very good. Not only does he come back in great shape, but he still thinks he can cook. Not only will we boycott, we'll set up our own tournament. Fact. Not only does he know how to dispose of bodies, he knows how to dispose of bodies in many different ways. In our head, not only did we embarrass Marky Mark, we let down the funky bunch. Not only did I not get the sensation of slowing down, I got the opposite. Not only has he violated the rules of this war game, but he's gone AWOL with U.S. government property. And let's go back to the idea. What was the idea? She was talking about the word water and the pronunciation, the American pronunciation of the word water. And she said, not only do we pronounce the R in the end of the word, er, water, but we also pronounce R in the middle of the word, the T in the middle of the word. Uh, when we say water, we like, we don't even say T, we say R, like water, water. It's just interesting to see what native speakers do uh, with their mouth. But that's not right. We don't pronounce the T as an R. We don't say war, or maybe she's thinking about a rolled R, like R. Now this sound doesn't exist in English, but it exists in many other languages. Is it the same sound? Let's try it. Water. Water, water. It's different. It's not a rolled R. It's a flat T or a fast D. Da 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 da. Not R, but da 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 da. Water, water, water. What's the difference? Well, one big difference is there's no air. When I say R and I do a rolled R, I'm pushing air. Not the same sound. If you pronounce the fast D, da 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 da, as a rolled R, R you will have an accent. People will probably understand you, but it's not correct. We cannot say water. It's water, water. Use a fasty. Da 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 da. We cannot say this sound is an R in any way. You know what else is hard? Expanding your vocabulary. True, but today we're gonna do just that. Marina and I are gonna give you 21 expressions to use instead of or in addition to it's hard. Today we're going to learn to avoid some important mistakes, so let's get started. First, this is not correct. Another great word to know, arduous. Again, when you say it's arduous, that means it requires a lot of effort, strength, and energy. You can say, I don't want to do my homework, it's arduous. Look at this task, I have to write a 20-page letter to my friend. The pronunciation of this word is not arduous. We don't say arduous, the pronunciation is arduous arduous and it means very hard arduous 
The du makes the j sound like jump and juice. Arju. We use a long u like food and boot. U together. Arju. Arduous. Arduous. The last syllable is relaxed. Us, us, us. And when you link the u to the us, there's a sound that links the vowels. It's like a w. It's the w, w sound. So together, arduous. Arduous. Example. They went on a long, difficult journey. They went on an arduous journey. It was an arduous journey. It was very long and very difficult. Let's practice. Was it an arduous journey? That's right. It was an arduous journey. And so the twins and I began an arduous journey halfway around the world. My only hope now is that you receive this letter before you depart and that my words will accompany you on your arduous journey back home. This is also not correct. Another great phrase. It's grueling. That means that something is extremely difficult and tiring and it requires a lot of time and energy. A good example of using this word would be talking about some kind of sport or marathon or a competition. I'm going to take part in a 156 mile run next year. Oh my god, it's grueling. Are you gonna do that? We don't pronounce this word grueling. It's not grueling, it's grueling. Grueling. The first vowel is the long oo, like food and boot. Gru, grueling, grueling. And it means very, very hard, like torture. He worked over 12 hours today. It was a long, grueling day. He had a grueling day at work today. It was a long, grueling day. Let's practice. He worked over 12 hours today. Was it a long, grueling day? That's right, it was a long, grueling day. After the grueling regular basketball season, we're now in month nine of the playoffs. So we look at these two words, arduous and grueling. Are they really better than hard? No, they're not. Don't stop saying hard. Keep saying hard if you want to sound natural. Because if you use these words and use them incorrectly, if you mispronounce them, people aren't going to understand you. These words are good to know, but they're not better than hard. The word hard is more natural, more common, and it's easier to pronounce. If you use hard, you'll avoid mispronouncing these words like arduous and grueling. The other night, it's hard to explain it, but it won't happen again. Sometimes it's hard to know what that is. It's hard to find someone to talk to, you know? It's hard to look back and see the truth about people you love. He worked really hard for that house. Grace, I know talking like this is really hard, but I worked really hard to get you into that school. This is also not correct. So this implies that this race is going to be hard, difficult, will take long time to run, and a lot of energy, of course. I cannot say will take long time to run. I have to use an article. In this case, time is countable. I have to say, a, uh, a long time. Together, it will take a long time to run. We have to use the article, a. Uh. Example, if you run a marathon, will it take a long time to run? That's right. If you run a marathon, it will take a long time to run. It'll take a long time, a real long time. It'll take a long time. It takes a long time for you to learn. Weeks, months, maybe. It takes a long time. Does it happen all at once? It takes a long time. It's very frustrating when it takes a long time. And it took a long time, but I finally found someone who believed me. We're really sorry, but this letter for you was in a fire a couple years ago. So it took a long time for us to get it to you. This is also not correct. It is advisable that you replace words with synonyms because they have slightly different meaning and slightly different mood to them, which means your speech will be more beautiful. I cannot say they have slightly different meaning and slightly different mood to them. The words meaning and mood are both countable, so I have to say a. Uh. I have to use an article. So it's correct to say they have a slightly different meaning and a slightly different mood to them. We have to use the article a uh, 
for both words, meaning and mood. A slightly different meaning and a slightly different mood. Or you can change the words to plural because they're countable. I can say they have slightly different meanings and slightly different moods to them. Because these words are countable, I have to use the article a or I have to make the nouns in the plural form. The best option is to use a. So it's correct to say they have a slightly different meaning and a slightly different mood to them. This is also not correct. So basically, it takes us a lot of time and effort to take her there, to explain her what would be going on. I cannot say explain her what would be going on. After explain, I have to use to. I have to say explain to her. Explain to her what would be going on. We see the pronunciation is not to her, but to, to, explain to her. We have to use the preposition to, pronounced to. Explain to her what would be going on. Or I can use an object. I can say, explain something to her. Example, she needs to explain something to her. I cannot say, she needs to explain her something. If you have an object, like something, it has to go immediately after the verb. She needs to explain something to her. Remember, you cannot say, explain her something. Explain something to her. Again, she needs to explain something to her. Remember, put the object directly after the verb and use the preposition to. She needs to explain something to her. Let's practice. Does she need to explain something to her? That's right. She needs to explain something to her. So remember, this question is incorrect. I cannot say, can you explain me something? No, it's not. We say, can you explain something to me? The order is important. And don't forget the preposition to with the verb explain. You didn't love her and you didn't have to explain to her family. I tried to explain to her what DNA was. I wanted her to hear my voice and try to explain to her why I did this. This is also not correct. Sewing is a very laborious process. Pay attention to how sewing is pronounced. In America, we don't say process. We say process. Use the short ah sound like hot and stop. The open sound, ah, pra, process. We say process in American English. Example, learning a second language is a long process. Let's practice. Is learning a second language a long process? That's right. Learning a second language is a long process. It can take your whole life. You know, it's a long process. And, uh, you know. Yeah. I know that this has been a long process for you, but when it comes to the best interests of the children who come before this court, we always err on the side of caution. No lawyer, no witnesses. What sort of due process is this? You know, it's going to be a long process and it's going to cost quite a bit of money. This is also not correct. And uh, even if you do not intend to use these phrases, it is good to know what they mean. It's not correct to say, even if you do not intend to use these phrases, it is good to know what they mean. I cannot say this phrases. This phrases? This is singular and phrases is plural. So I have to say these phrases. Let's look at the difference between this for singular and these for plural. They sound similar, but they are different. So let's look at the difference. When I say the word this for something singular, I use the short I sound like is and in, I, I. The mouth is slightly open, I, I. And you make a short sound, I, I, this. And the S is a true S. There's no voice, there's no vibration. S, together, this, this. But when I say these, for something plural, these, I use the long E, like green beans. The mouth is more closed. And you smile a little bit. E, the, these. And the S makes a Z sound, like zebra. Z. You have a voice. You have vibration. Z. These. These phrases. More than one. I cannot say this phrases. I say these phrases. Are these phrases supposed to mean something to me? I want you to listen to this phrase I have up on the board. It's the court seemed to stress this phrase. 
we find this phrase, making you an offer. What's this phrase? This is also not correct. Uphill both ways. You know, I can say it was so hard to get a Fulbright scholarship in an American university. I had to write an essay. I had to do this, this and that. And somebody from the 80s might answer, I went uphill both ways to get into a university in the US because now you have internet. Now you have YouTube with free resources on how to get a Fulbright scholarship and I didn't have it. You cannot say I went uphill both ways to get into a university. Say, it was difficult to get into a university. Or, I worked very hard to get into a university. You can say, it was challenging. It was very challenging to get into a university. But you cannot say, I went uphill both ways to get into a university. So what is uphill both ways? Uphill both ways is a joke. It's a story older people would tell younger people to tell them about how difficult their life was when they were younger. It goes like this. When I was your age, I used to walk to school every day in the snow, and it was uphill both ways. You see, it's a joke. It's impossible. It cannot be uphill both ways. They're trying to emphasize how difficult it was. But this is a joke. It's not an expression that you can use instead of, it's hard. Let's hear another good teacher, Bob the Canadian, explain this. Another funny phrase that you might hear every once in a while is the phrase, uh, when I was a kid, I had to walk to school uphill both ways. Um, this is something we sometimes say to be funny. Um, sometimes when kids complain about their life, maybe they complain because the Wi-Fi is too slow or something else that might seem silly to an older person. Uh, you might just say, hey, when I was a kid, I used to have to walk to school uphill both ways. It's a little bit of a joke, um, but it just highlights that kids these days sometimes complain too much. This is not correct. And in this course, I'm gonna take you by the hand, I'm gonna grab your hand and be like, let's do it together. I'm gonna explain you everything. I cannot say, I'm gonna explain you everything. First, when we use the verb explain, we need the preposition to. Explain to. But we cannot say, I'm gonna explain to you everything. We have to move the object everything so it's directly after the verb. I'm going to explain everything to you. We have to use this order. We cannot change the word order. So it's correct to say, I'm going to explain everything to you. We cannot say, I'm going to explain you everything, or we cannot say, I'm going to explain to you everything. We have to say, I'm going to explain everything to you. This is the only correct way to say it. But this is also not correct. Personal statements, recommendation letters, the application itself. We cannot say recommendation letters recommendation letters. We have to move the stress to the first syllable, re, recommendation. And the second syllable is pronounced with a closed sound, uh, uh, like cup and up, reca, reca, recommendation letters, recommendation. This word has five syllables. The stress is on the first, re, recommendation. And the fourth syllable is stressed recommendation. Again, recommendation. Recommendation letters. So again, the word is not pronounced recommendation. It's pronounced recommendation. Recommendation letters. Today we're going to learn how to use some important vocabulary correctly. So let's get started. Vinny and I have created a course together with our native speaker teacher. That's true. Called Intermediate to Advanced. First, this is not correct. Basic versus advanced English. I'm going to bed. I'm dozing off. See you tomorrow. I'm going to bed is not basic English. It's how we say it. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to bed and I don't want to be married anymore. Now out of my house because I'm going to bed. Well, I'm, I'm going to bed now. Can I be excused? I want to go to bed. Danny, I told you to go to bed like your sister. Get out, Raven. I want to go to bed. Mom, you want to go to bed? Hey. Hey. I can finish this if you want to go to bed. Because when I say I'm going to bed, it means I'm going to sleep through the night. So I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. But I'm dozing off. I'll see you tomorrow is not correct. I'm dozing off does not mean I'm going to sleep through the night. 
it has a different meaning. Doze off means you're going to sleep for a short time. I can demonstrate. Doze off is a phrasal verb, and it means to sleep for a short time. So no one would ever say, I'm dozing off, I'll see you tomorrow. Because doze off means to sleep for a short time. Example, if you're driving and you're tired, sometimes you might doze off. Or sometimes if I'm watching a movie and I'm tired, I doze off. I sleep for a short time, maybe five or ten minutes, maybe three seconds. I don't want you dozing off. So I just laid there, you know, for a while and then I could feel myself like dozing off. Do you ever doze off on a flight? I dozed off out by the pool. Yes, I, I think I did doze off for a while. You dozed off and had a bad dream. Oh my goodness, I must have dozed off when your, your dog startled me. Could you maybe have dozed off and had one of those dreams again? No. Example, my uncle used to doze off in his favorite chair when he would watch a movie. He would sleep for two, three, five minutes and wake up. It wasn't his plan to sleep. It just happened. He dozed off. So dozing off is not the advanced equivalent of go to bed. So if you're going to sleep through the night, say I'm going to bed. And if you talk about someone sleeping for a short time, use the phrasal verb doze off. It's 10 o'clock at night and he's going to bed because he's tired and he's going to sleep through the night. Let's practice. Is he going to bed? That's right, he's going to bed. Or I can say, he's going to go to bed. When I say go to bed, the pronunciation changes. The T is a fast D. Da da da, go to, go to. So to is pronounced da, go to. He's going to go to bed. I just got tired, so I'm going to, I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. So we made out for a little while on the couch, and I said, okay, I'm going to go to bed now, so it's time for you to leave. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to go to bed. I'm really tired. It's 10 o'clock. He's tired, and he's going to go to bed. Let's practice. Is he going to go to bed? That's right. He's going to go to bed. Example, he's watching a movie, but he's tired, so he's sleeping for a short time, and then he's waking up again. And then he sleeps for a short time, and he's waking up again. That's dozing off. So he's dozing off in front of the TV. Pronunciation for in front of. You don't hear in front of the TV. You hear in front of, in front of, in front of the TV. The NT in front is between vowels, so you don't really hear the T. You hear in front of, in front of. And because you have a consonant after the F in of, you don't have to pronounce that either. So you hear in front of the, in front of the TV. He's dozing off in front of the TV. Let's practice. Is he dozing off in front of the TV? That's right. He's dozing off in front of the TV. First, this is not correct. I didn't meet any Russians. Like there were no Russians in the place where I were. I cannot say there were no Russians in the place where I were. I have to say was. It's correct to say there were no Russians in the place where I was. In this sentence, we cannot use were. Were is for you were and they were. We use were for plural. But if it's I, we say I was, he was, she was, and it was. The only time you can say I were is if you have a conditional. Example, if I were the president, I would live in the White House. But this is not a conditional, so we have to say was. There were no Russians in the place where I was. This is also not correct. Hey, I'm so excited to talk with you. Thanks for inviting. I cannot say thanks for inviting. I need an object. I have to say me. Me is the object. Thanks for inviting me. If it's one person, thanks for inviting me. If it's two people, thanks for inviting us. But whenever you say thanks for inviting, you need an object. You have to use an object with this sentence. So I cannot say thanks for inviting. I have to say thanks for inviting me. So let's practice. Example, I invited you to my party. What do you say? That's right. Thanks for inviting me. Let's practice. Example, I invited you and your friend to my party. What do you say? That's right. Thanks for inviting us. Very good. This is also not correct. I was like, I cannot understand British accent. 
I cannot say I don't understand British accent. When you talk about accents, we have to use the article the, the British accent. Sometimes you can use the article a, a British accent. Let's talk about the difference. If you say I don't understand, we have to use the article the. I don't understand the British accent. Because you're talking about the accent as a whole, spoken by all the people who speak with that accent. We use the in this case. I don't understand the British accent. So it's not correct to say, I don't understand British accent. We have to use the article, the. I don't understand the British accent. So when can you say, uh, a British accent? Example, one person, this guy, he speaks. He speaks with a British accent. In this case, I cannot say the. He speaks with the British accent. Because I'm not talking about the accent as a whole spoken by all the people who speak with this accent. I'm talking about one person. So I use the article, uh. He speaks with a British accent. I speak with an American accent. When you talk about a person, use the article, uh. He speaks with a British accent. And it doesn't have to be just one person. It can be two people. They. They speak with a British accent. But if you say, I don't understand, you're talking about the accent as a whole. So we say, the. I don't understand the British accent. We need an article in both cases. So whenever you use the word accent, you need an article either a uh, or the, depending on the situation. Let's practice. Do you understand the British accent? Very good. Let's practice. Does he speak with a British accent? That's right. He speaks with a British accent. Do they speak with a British accent? That's right. They speak with a British accent. This is also not correct. And I felt a little depressed, but that was also a huge motivation for me to continue. I cannot say that was also huge motivation for me to continue. In this case, motivation is countable. I have to say, uh. I have to use the article, uh, when talking about motivation in this case. That was a huge motivation for me to continue is correct. We have to use, uh. It's confusing because sometimes motivation is countable and sometimes it's not. I can talk about motivation in general and say, motivation is important. You need motivation in your life to do things, to achieve your goals. You need motivation. But if I talk about a specific case and I say, that was also, this is a specific case. It's one time. We have to say a motivation. That was a huge motivation for me to continue. I have to use a when talking about motivation in this case. This is also not correct. And it doesn't matter that I've been studying English for like, 10 years by that time? It's not correct to say it doesn't matter that I've been studying English for 10 years by that time. When I say by that time, I'm referring to a point in the past in relation to another action in the past. So correctly it should be, it didn't matter that I had been studying English for 10 years by that time. That I had been studying English for 10 years by that time. You can make the contraction. I had together I'd, I'd been, I'd been studying English for 10 years by that time. Together, it didn't matter that I'd been studying English for 10 years by that time. This is also not correct. So before leaving, I went to a bookstore. You cannot say before leaving, I went to bookstore. Bookstore is a countable noun, so we have to use an article. We can say a bookstore. So it's correct to say before leaving, I went to a bookstore. Or you can use the article, the. Before leaving, I went to the bookstore. What's the difference? If you're talking about one bookstore in general, you say, a. Uh. You use the article, a. Uh. Before leaving, I went to a bookstore. But if it's a specific bookstore, a bookstore that I told you about earlier and you know about, I can use the specific article, the. Before leaving, I went to the bookstore. You know the one I'm talking about. Or if you live in a small town and there's only one bookstore in the whole town, then you can say the. If only one exists, we use the article the. Before leaving, I went to the bookstore. Because you know which one I'm talking about, because there's only one in the town. But if you live in a big city, it's better to use a. Before leaving, I went to a bookstore. It's one of many bookstores that exist in that city. Use the article a. But we cannot say, before leaving, I went to a bookstore. We need an article. Sometimes a, and sometimes the, depending on the situation. Let's practice. When was the last time you went to a bookstore?
Very good. This is also not correct. Second, I have really weird Russian accent. People don't get what I'm saying. You cannot say I have really weird Russian accent. Again, we're talking about accent. We talked about accent before where you can say the accent, example, the British accent or a British accent. So the same is true for the Russian accent or a Russian accent. If I say the Russian accent, I'm talking about the accent as a whole. But in this example, you're talking about one person speaking with one accent. So it's a, a Russian accent. It's correct to say I have a really weird Russian accent. You have to put a before both modifiers. I have a really weird Russian accent. Because you're talking about accent, we have to use the article a in this situation. Let's practice with accent. Do you have an accent? Very good. What kind of accent do you have? Very good. This is also not correct. It's actually a lot of places around the world where people have different uh, ideas, different goals in their lives. I cannot say it's a lot of places around the world. I have to express existence with there is or there are. I cannot use it is or its because I'm expressing existence. I use there is or there are. In this case, a lot of places is plural, so we say there are. There are a lot of places around the world is correct. I cannot say it is or it's a lot of places around the world. Example, there are a lot of places around the world where people speak English. Let's practice. Are there a lot of places around the world where people speak English? That's right. Very good. There are a lot of places around the world where people speak English. I cannot say it's a lot of places around the world. I have to express existence with there are. This is also not correct. Yeah. When we graduated from an accelerator here in Silicon Valley, I had a, a presentation. I was on the stage in front of 700 top investors here who invest in Uber, Facebook. I cannot say I was in the stage. When talking about stage, we use the preposition on. We cannot use the preposition in. So you can say, I was on the stage, or more commonly, I was on stage. Both are correct. On the stage or on stage. I think on stage is more common, but they're both correct. So it's correct to say, I was on stage, but not in stage or in the stage. We have to use on in both situations. Either I was on the stage or I was on stage. I have been on stage a few times, performing, singing in school, things like that. And usually I get nervous when I'm on stage. What about you? Do you get nervous when you're on stage? Very good. This is also not correct. But he gave me all the brochures and I... I cannot say brochures. We move the stress and we move the stress to the second syllable, brochures. We have to put the stress on the second syllable. Again, brochures, brochures. I cannot say brochures. We have to put the stress on the second syllable, brochures. And what are brochures? We have three different words for this thing. You can say brochures pamphlets, or flyers. And we use a phrasal verb, hand out. He's handing out brochures. Or I can say he's handing out pamphlets. And I can also say he's handing out flyers. Hand out is the phrasal verb we use when you give these things to many people. He's handing out pamphlets. He's handing out flyers or he's handing out brochures. Not brochures, but brochures. Let's practice. Is he handing out brochures? That's right. He's handing out brochures. Is he handing out pamphlets? That's right. He's handing out pamphlets. Is he handing out flyers? That's right. He's handing out flyers. So remember, brochures, pamphlets, and flyers. You're talking about the same thing. This is not correct. Or, I haven't seen him since my mom's birthday. The pronunciation of the word is not sin, sin. We have to use the long E sound and say seen, seen. So let's look at the difference. The first word is sin, with the short I sound like this is, sin. And the second word is seen, 
with a long E sound like green beans. Seen. First, let's talk about seen. Pronounced with a long E. Seen. I have never seen this movie. Have you ever seen this movie? Very good. That's seen. And the other word is sin. Sin is a countable noun, so I say a sin. A sin is when you break God's law. That is a sin. Example, it's a sin to kill somebody. That's definitely a sin. Let's practice. Is it a sin to kill somebody? That's right. It's a sin to kill somebody. This is not correct. And whenever I go to a theme park with uh, my friends, uh, I just don't take any roller coasters. We cannot say, I don't take any roller coasters. We use the verb take when you talk about transportation. Example, I take a bus, or I take a train, I take a taxi, or I take an Uber. But a roller coaster is not a form of transportation, so we cannot say take. What do we say? We have two options. You can say ride or go on. You ride a roller coaster or you go on a roller coaster. Go on is a phrasal verb and it is not separable. We do not separate it. You go on a roller coaster. You go on a roller coaster or you ride a roller coaster. And what is a roller coaster? A roller coaster is a ride. That's what we call these things at the amusement park. If you go to Disneyland, Disneyland is an amusement park. And the things there are called rides. So you can say, I don't like to go on the rides or I don't like to ride the rides. We see ride as the verb and ride as the name of the thing. Now let's talk about roller coasters. They're at an amusement park and they're riding a roller coaster. Or you can say they're going on a roller coaster. Both are correct. But I cannot say they're taking a roller coaster. We cannot use take for roller coasters. Let's practice. What are they doing? Are they riding a roller coaster? That's right, they're riding a roller coaster. Or if there's only one roller coaster at this amusement park, if only one roller coaster exists at this amusement park, then you can use the article the. They're riding the roller coaster. But most amusement parks have more than one, so a uh, is more common, depending on the amusement park. Now let's practice with the phrasal verb go on. Are they going on a roller coaster? That's right, they're going on a roller coaster. I don't like to ride roller coasters. What about you? Do you like to ride roller coasters? Very good. So remember, use take when you talk about transportation. You can take a bus, you can take a train, you can take a taxi. But if you're talking about rides at an amusement park, don't use take. Use ride as the verb, you ride the rides, you ride the roller coaster, or use go on. You go on the rides, or you go on the roller coaster. This is not correct. Lily Allen is a British singer. Anyways, if you have a favorite singer with your favorite accent. We don't say singer. The G is not pronounced with a hard G sound. Singer is not correct. We say singer. Make a nasal sound with the NG. Mm -mm. Singer. And then link to the ER sound. Singer. Singer. She's a singer. Dancing was too hard for me. I'm a singer. Are you a good singer? And, uh, the singer is still a jerk. Have you ever heard of this singer? And you're a really good singer. So? My grandma was a singer. I'm, I'm not a good singer, so I didn't enunciate. Oh, wow. Alina, the singer. Sometimes, but, uh, she was a singer, too. Well, I was a singer. Yeah. So we see words like singer and hanger. In both of these words, the G is not pronounced with a hard G sound. We don't say singer and we don't say hanger. We say singer and hanger. Today we're going to learn the correct pronunciation of some bakery vocabulary. So let's get started. First, this is not correct. Today I wanted to eat a croissant. So I went to a place that sells croissant, and I bought a croissant. In American English, we do not say croissant. That's French. In English, American English, we say croissant. Croissant. The first vowel is a short sound. Uh, uh. Cr, cr. Cr, cr. 
crus, cr, cr, crus. The second syllable is ah, like hot and stop. So together, crusa, croissant, croissant is the American pronunciation of this word. We see with the nt at the end, the t is a stop t. We don't say croissant. We put the tongue up and stop the air for that t. So together, croissant, croissant. This is a croissant. Nobody really cares where the croissant was invented. You're not a plate of croissants. Hello. Bonjour. Uh, two chocolate croissants and coffee. That sucker with sugar and have yourself some delicious French roast that they have at the continental mm -hmm. breakfast. A croissant, maybe? Well, you know, I, I was thinking, let's start with the croissants and let's see how it goes. I've been experimenting with cupcakes and croissants all day. Yeah, I was. I don't know about you, but I could really use one of Nora's almond croissants and a hot tea. Let's hear that clip again. So I went to a place that sells croissant. It's not correct to say, I went to a place that sells croissant. Croissant is countable. I have one croissant or two croissants. In this case, I have to use the plural form. I have to put the S there. I went to a place that sells croissants. I cannot say I went to a place that sells croissant. And why do we call the bread croissant? Because it's a French name, but we pronounce it a little different. We pronounce it with the American accent. Croissant comes from the French word, which comes from another English word, this word, crescent. This is the shape. This is a crescent shape. And this word has a different pronunciation. Eh, eh. Make the eh sound like eggs and bed. Eh, cre, crescent. Crescent. This is a crescent shape. And that's why they call these croissants. Because it has a crescent shape. So two different words. A croissant is a bakery item. And a crescent is a shape. Like a crescent moon. First, this is not correct. If you're interested in speaking English as a native speaker without any mistakes, continue watching this video. In this case, I cannot say speaking as a native speaker. If you're not a native speaker and you're interested in speaking similar to a native speaker, we cannot use as. We have to use like. So it's correct to say if you're interested in speaking like a native speaker without any mistakes. And keep watching this video for a complete explanation of the difference between as and like. But first, this is also not correct. In this situation, I cannot say speak fast as a native or as a native speaker. I have to use like. Because in this idea, the person is not a native speaker. We have to use like in this case. So it's correct to say speak fast like a native speaker. But what about fast as? Can I say fast as? Sure but it has a different meaning. And we need another as. We need as two times. As fast as a native speaker. This has a completely different meaning. It means to speak the same speed as a native speaker. But that's not what she's trying to say. It should be speak fast like a native speaker. But let's talk about the structure. As fast as. It means equal, at equal speed. Example, I cannot run as fast as a cheetah. A cheetah can run much faster than me. So I can say, we cannot run at the same speed. So I can say, I cannot run as fast as a cheetah. Let's practice. Can you run as fast as a cheetah? Very good. Me either. I cannot run as fast as a cheetah. Example, these are two brothers. They're not twins, they're different ages. But one brother is the same height as the other brother. So I can say he's as tall as his brother because they're the same height. He's as tall as his brother. Let's practice. Is he as tall as his brother? That's right. He's as tall as his brother. And she's shorter. She's not the same height. So I can use a negative and say she's not. She's not as tall as her brother. She's shorter. Let's practice. Is she as tall as her brother? That's right. She's not as tall as her brother. He's taller. They're not the same height. Example. The temperature today is the same temperature as yesterday. It's hot today and it was hot yesterday. So I can say today is as hot as yesterday. Today's as hot as yesterday. Remember, do not use so. I do not say today is so hot as yesterday. 
Use as two times. Today is as hot as yesterday. The same temperature. Let's practice. Is today as hot as yesterday? That's right. Today is as hot as yesterday. Now let's take a closer look at the difference between as and like. Today we're talking about the difference between as and like. So what is the difference? We use as when you're talking about the same person or thing. Example, I work as a teacher because I am a teacher. I cannot say I work like a teacher. Like means similar, not exactly the same. And as is exactly the same. You will move to the attic with Becky and work as a servant. Your work, your hopes, your dreams. Well, I work as a teacher and I also do field work and write monographs. I used to work as a massage therapist, so. And work as a janitor in a bank you own. I want to interview you about what it's like to work as a maid. For example, when you say the same. Example, these houses are the same. But if I want to connect the same, I use the connector or preposition as. This house is the same as that house. I cannot say this house is the same like that house. Because they are the same, I use as. This house is the same as that house. Well, I certainly can't live in the same house as my ex-husband. Yes, it's me, the same guy as before. It was the same thing as catalog work. So. Failed marriages and ever worry we're doing the same thing as them? The same thing as last time. Everyone's happy. So you really think that you're the same person as Leon Trotsky? A real live father actually living in the same house as his wife and kid. Does tumor mean the same thing as cancer? I grew up in the same house as you, moron. Let's practice. Is this house the same as that house? That's right. This house is the same as that house. Example. He loves her. He loves her as a friend. Because they are friends. Because they are friends, we use as. He loves her as a friend. I was actually telling Preston that I, I just love him as a friend. Hey. I'm proud to have you as a friend. Nope. Sandy, you do love me as a friend. We're friends, right? I like you as a friend. Yeah. Look, Dexter, I like you as a friend and all, but... Mike, no! Listen to me carefully. Okay. I love him as a friend. Yes, I love him as a friend. Like a brother, but that's it! <laughs> friend, brother, whatever. It makes me sick to think what I did. That my beautiful boy would want someone like you as a friend. Let's practice. Does he love her as a friend? That's right, he loves her as a friend. These two guys are friends, but they're very close, like brothers. They're not brothers, so I cannot use as, I use like, because it's similar, but not the same. He loves him like a brother. I cannot say he loves him as a brother, because they're not brothers. It's similar, but not the same. He loves him like a brother. And that big guy up front, I love him like a brother. Got the train, didn't I? Love you like a brother, Joe. I love you like a brother. You're more like a brother to me than he is. You're more like a brother to me than he is. And um, Chris has been like a brother to me. He was kind of like a brother to me. He's been like a brother to you. I love you like a brother, Philip. I love him like a brother. Don't get me wrong, I love him like a brother. Just not one of my Mace, I love you like a brother, but I gotta say that when it come to being discreet, you're a disgrace. We'll treat him like a brother. Tatiana's sister loves Trigorin like a brother. I love him like a brother. Let's practice. Does he love him like a brother? That's right. He loves him like a brother. We hear the pronunciation. He loves him. Loves him. The H in him is silent, so you link the words. Loves him. He loves him like a brother. They're not really brothers. Back to my first example. I said I work as a teacher. I don't work like a teacher because I am a teacher. It's like the same person, so I use as. I am a teacher or I work as a teacher. Example, she works. She works as a teacher too. Let's practice. Does she work as a teacher? 
That's right. She works as a teacher. And we have some expressions to help us see the difference between as and like. Example, if he works very hard, I can use the expression, he works like a dog. He works like a dog means he works very hard. And we don't say he works as a dog because he's not a dog. He's a person. He works similar to a dog. So we use like. Like is similar. He works like a dog. Maybe in your language you have other expressions, like he works like a horse or like a donkey. You can say that too. People will understand. But the expression in American English is he works like a dog. I, I work. I work like a dog. And I, where's the money? I, I mean, I don't know it. And I work like a dog day and night, living off a of coffee from a pot none of you want to touch. Go home, get a good night's sleep, wake up in the morning and work like a dog. Work like a dog all his life. Work like a dog and advertise. Especially manual labor. It makes you work like a horse. When I work, I work like a maniac. I know what you're thinking. American dogs don't work hard. They're lazy, right? That's true. But the expression comes from England. And in England, dogs work really hard. That's where the expression came from. So we use it in America. He works hard. You say he works like a dog. Let's practice. Does he work like a dog? That's right, he works like a dog. Another expression, he sleeps. He sleeps really well. If he sleeps really well, I can say, he sleeps like a log. This is a log, so you can imagine where the expression came from. He sleeps like a log. Or I can talk about right now. What is he doing? He's sleeping like a log. But it's a routine, every night. So I use the simple present action, he sleeps. It's a routine, so I say, he sleeps like a log. He sleeps like a log every night. Luckily, I can count on you to sleep like a log. Don't lull yourself into any false security. I sleep like a log. Sleeping like a log. I sleep like a baby, my friend. I sleep like a baby. See, that's interesting. How did you sleep? Oh, like a log. In fact, I took a nap on it. Slept like a log. Don't look at me. I slept like a log. Like a log, Petey. Thanks. Maybe you have a different expression in your language. Maybe you say, he sleeps like a bear, or he sleeps like a rock. You can say that too. People will understand you. But we have this expression, he sleeps like a log. Let's practice. Does he sleep like a log? That's right. He sleeps like a log. He sleeps very well. He doesn't wake up. And we have an expression for this. Sweat. Sweat like a pig. If you sweat a lot, if somebody sweats a lot, I can say, they're sweating like a pig. Example, he's sweating a lot. So I can use the expression, he's sweating like a pig. I cannot say he's sweating as a pig because he's not a pig. He's a person. So I use like. Like is similar, not the same thing. He's sweating like a pig. Burning up. Sweat like a pig. Those goddamn lights made me sweat like a pig. I instantly started to sweat like a pig. Let's practice. Is he sweating like a pig? That's right. He's sweating like a pig. So remember, like is similar, but not the same. I work like a dog. I am not a dog. I work similar to a dog, so I work like a dog. But I am a teacher. It's the same person. I am a teacher. It's like the same. I am a teacher. So I work as a teacher. Use as when it's the same thing. And remember the preposition for the same. When I say the same, I say the same as. This house is the same as that house. Today we're going to talk about why it's not correct to say this. You can also replace happy birthday with happy plus a person's age. Happy 16 years old. Happy 18 years old. That's right. You cannot say happy 16 years old. It's not correct. You can say happy 16th or happy 16th birthday, but you cannot say happy 16 years old. It's not correct. Happy 18th birthday, son. The next word that we love to use is word many. I have many problems. I have many shoes. I have many friends. Uh, we say it all the time. Great alternatives are handful. I have handful of friends. First, a handful is a noun that you can count. And that's why we say a handful. A is for one. A handful. 
but the most important thing, a handful means a small amount. A small amount, not many. For example, I have a handful of friends. It means I have a few friends, not many. I invited a lot of people to the party, but only a handful of them showed up. It means only a few people showed up not many. I found that lots of organizations and teams claim they foster innovation, but out of those, I'd say only a handful of them are actually doing it. Besides its creators, I am one of only a handful of people ever to hold this sphere. Most people have just a handful of friends. Um, growing up as a kid in school, I had a handful of friends that really had my back. Maybe you are pronouncing some words in a wrong way. Let's do a quick test. Calm. Calm. Something you Use for it here, calm. It's not calm. We cannot use the short ah sound like hot and stop, calm. We have to use the long o sound like no and go. We pronounce this word comb, o. Make the long o sound, comb. And remember, the b is silent. Don't pronounce the b, comb. So comb is the noun, is the thing. I have a comb, and it's also the verb. I comb my hair in the morning with my comb. Make the long O sound, comb. Today we're going to learn how to use this word correctly. Let's get started. Uh, she divorced from Andy. Or you could just say she divorced Andy. So there are two ways to say this correctly. Divorce from Andy, divorce Andy. It's not correct to say she divorced from Andy. If you want to use this word as a verb, the preposition from is not necessary. She divorced Andy. Let's look at some examples. His wife eventually divorced him. His wife, Robin Givens, divorced him. She divorced him. But if you want to use this word as a noun, a divorce, then we say she got a divorce from him. Let's look at some examples. He claimed he had previously tried to get a divorce from Kardashian. The last thing I wanted in the world was to get a divorce from my husband because I loved him. Or, if you want to use it as an adjective, she's divorced. Then we say, she is divorced from Andy. It's not very common, but it is correct. Remember, if you want to use this word as a verb, to divorce, the preposition from is not necessary. It's not correct to say, uh, she divorced from... Andy. We say, she divorced Andy. She divorced him. This is not correct. Do not forget to share this class with everyone you know who wants to sound more American. It's not correct to say everyone who want. Everyone and everybody are special words. We have to use the verb in the singular form. For example, everybody speaks, everybody wants. Everybody needs, or you can say, everyone who wants, everyone who speaks, everyone who needs. It's very important to use the verb in the singular form. Today we're going to learn about some common mistakes and how to avoid them. We're going to talk about why it's not correct to say this. Wow, why haven't anyone told me that? And why it's not correct to say this. And again, everybody have their own opinion. Now, everyone and everybody, you're not talking about one single person. You're talking about more than one person. But we still use the singular structure. That's right. If I say everybody, I cannot say everybody are here. I say everybody is here or everyone is here. You use a singular structure with everybody and everyone. So the action have, I have a car, you have a car, and she has a car. If I say everybody, is it everybody have a car or everybody has a car? That's right, it's everybody has a car. With everybody, we use the singular structure has. We cannot say everybody have. Use everybody has. So I cannot say everybody have their own opinion. I have to use the singular structure with everybody. Everybody has their own opinion. So it's not correct to say, why haven't anyone told me? 
anyone is a single person. Anyone, anybody, somebody or someone. You're talking about a single person. Have and negative haven't is good for I haven't, you haven't, they haven't, and we haven't. But if I say anyone, I have to use has or negative hasn't. So we use anyone for a question with the helper has. Has anyone told you this? If I make it negative, I use hasn't. And the question is, why hasn't anyone told me that? Remember, with anyone, anybody, someone and somebody use has, not have. So examples, has anyone told you that? Question, has anyone told you that? And you can say, no, no one has told me that. No one or nobody is also a single person. We use has the single structure. Nobody has told me that. Or I can make the negative has not together hasn't and make the negative question. Why hasn't anyone told me that? So remember these special words, anybody, nobody, somebody, and everybody. Always use these words with a singular structure. And it's also not correct to say this. To hit the nail on the head, mean to get something right or have success. We cannot say it mean to get something right. We have to change our verb mean with an S and we have to say means. It means to get something right. We have to change our verb, simple verb, after he, she, it, or any singular subject with an S. We cannot say it mean, it means. If I ask a question, what does it mean? With does, we use the simple action. What does it mean? But when we answer positive, we change. It means. It means to get something right. I don't speak German. What does that mean? Ah, that means attention. In English, that means attention. Let's practice. What does that mean in English? That's right. It means attention in English. It's not correct to say this. How's the app called? I want to check it out. That's right. We cannot use how with the action called. I cannot say how's the app called. So, how do you say it? We have to use the question word what. What's the app called? So, let's look at the question. What is contraction what's? What's the app called? Or what is the app called? A more common question is what is it? What is contraction what's? What's it called? Use it as a substitution for any object. What's it called? What's it called? Remember, we cannot say how is it called. We have to use the question word what if you have the verb called. What is it called? If I ask you the question, what's it called? And you don't know, you say, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it is, it is, contraction, it's, what it's called. Pronunciation, when you link the words, what it's, the T changes to a D and you hear what it's, what it's, what it's called. I don't know what it's called. So question, what is it called? You answer, I don't know what it's called. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right. I don't know what it's called. And it's not correct to say this. So this is curtains. That's right. We cannot say this is curtains. Because curtains is plural, curtains, we have to say these are. We cannot say this is. This is is for singular things. But if it's plural, we say these are. These are curtains. Pronunciation, curtains. We have two correct pronunciations. You can say curtains, pronouncing the T, or curtains, making a stop T, curt, and then fall to the N. Curtain, curtains. So the two pronunciations, curtains or curtains. 
curtains is the more common pronunciation in American English. Let's practice with these are. What are these? These are curtains. What are these? Very good. And what are these? These are glasses. What are these? Very good. These are glasses. This is not correct. And he's American. This is American accent, by the way. And you're not able to tell uh, whether this is American accent or whether this is British accent. There are many accents. If you're talking about one accent, we say an accent. I have an accent. Do you have an accent? She has a British accent. He has an American accent. Remember, American starts with a vowel. We say an American accent. He has an American accent. Let's practice. Does he have an American accent? That's right. He has an American accent. Good job. But remember, if you're talking about a specific accent, we say the American accent, the British accent. For example, I like the American accent. I want to learn the American accent. Do you like the American accent? Good job. Remember to use articles if you want to sound natural, like a native speaker. Today we're going to learn some mistakes to avoid. First, let's watch this. We're going to try to practice English that is spoken in the US. And in this workbook, we're focusing on the American version of English. You're actually getting a list of 1000 most used words in English that we have gathered together with my team. And they are the words that are intermediate level. Americans don't use the word bunch to refer to this hairstyle. This hairstyle is called a bun. She's wearing her hair in a bun not a bunch. This is called a bun in American English. We would never call it a bunch. Let's practice. Is she wearing her hair in a bun? That's right. She's wearing her hair in a bun. So what is a bunch? The word bunch comes from these examples. This is a bunch of bananas and this is a bunch of grapes. But now we use the word bunch to mean a lot of. A bunch of is used the same as a lot of. I can say he has a lot of money, or I can say he has a bunch of money. It's the same meaning. And he has a bunch of money. Let's practice. Does he have a bunch of money? That's right. He has a bunch of money. And the word lorry is not used in America. We call it a truck. Americans would never call it a lorry. That's British English. A lot of Americans like big trucks. I don't, but a lot of Americans like big trucks. Let's practice. Do a lot of Americans like big trucks? That's right. A lot of Americans like big trucks, not lorries. This is also not correct. Oh, I was always thinking I'm going to become someone like Britney Spears. <laughs> and uh... it's not correct to say I was always thinking that I'm going to become someone like Britney Spears. When you use the past, I was always thinking. We have to use past for the second part, too. It's correct to say, I was always thinking I was going to become someone like Britney Spears. Or you can use would. You can say, I was always thinking I would become someone like Britney Spears. But we cannot use I'm going to after I was thinking. So, she was always thinking she was going to become someone like Britney Spears. Let's practice. Was she always thinking that she was going to become someone like Britney Spears? That's right. She was always thinking that she was going to become someone like Britney Spears. This is not correct. By the way, guys, if you want to learn more phrases like that, if you want to brush up your grammar, my team and I have put together a workbook on grammar. It is called Grammar is All You Need. In American English, it's not correct to say brush up your grammar. You have to say brush up on your grammar. Let's listen to some examples. We have to brush up on your hospitality skills. Brush up on that chapter six stuff. Fair to good. I'll brush up on it. You may want to brush up on the newest traffic laws in Oregon. You brush up on your ethnic studies. My brother. This is also not correct. It also have a workbook where you can go through exercises. It's not correct to say it also have. Remember, I have, you have, 
We have, they have, but he has, she has, it has. So we have to say it also has. Let's listen to some examples. Yes, this movie will be an Oscar contender, but it also has commercial appeal as well. It also has heroes, soldiers like Lincoln Scott. This is also not correct. By the way, guys, if you are looking for more ways to uh, improve your English to speak like a native speaker, uh, I have created a workbook in English which has all of the rules that you can think of. It has a video from me where I explain you how to use it, where I explain you tenses in English, the most used tenses. We made it really affordable. It's a very small check. Here we have two mistakes. Let's talk about the first one. It's not correct to say explain you. Explain is a special verb. We have to say explain to. For example, explain to me, explain to him, explain to her, explain to you. Remember to say explain to. Let's listen to some examples. You need to really explain to us what makes you special. Sweetie, explain to us again what kind of a book this is you're writing. I'm trying to explain to you that it is impossible to pay the check because your expenses have exceeded your income. All due respect, can someone explain to me why I'm reading about breaks in this case in the Chronicle instead of getting calls from you? It's also not correct to say it's a small check. We made it really affordable. It's a very small check. A check can be a bill at a restaurant. But if you're talking about something that is affordable, you can say it's at a low price. It's affordable. It's at a low price. Produce a line of high quality antiques at a low price. Oh, that's quality at a low price. Take it from a this is also not correct. If you want to learn more English with me, if you want more materials that you can use while watching my classes, I have a huge kind of huge workbook. It's over 180 pages and uh, it will really enhance your learning experience. And this is something that I've done a year ago. It's not correct to say this is something that I've done a year ago. When you're talking about a specific time in the past, we use simple past, not present perfect. So remember, if you say yesterday, last week, two months ago, last year, a year ago, two years ago, we have to use simple past, not present perfect. This is also not correct. I have the whole workbook that focuses on English language. It's not correct to say the focus is on English language. We have to say the focus is on the English language. You can say the focus is on English, but if you say language, we have to say the focus is on the English language. As long as it's in the English language. Boy. What's the most common double consonant in the English language? This is also not correct. This workbook has 16 chapters on the most important topics of the English grammar done by my company, done by Linguatrip. It's not correct to say topics of the English grammar. We have to say topics of English grammar. We don't say the, the English grammar. It's not correct. This is also not correct. Again, the link is in description below, 66% off. It's not correct to say the link is in description. If you're talking about a specific description, we have to say in the description. The link is in the description. There's a link in the description below. I hope to see you there. This is also not correct. And free chapter on English prepositions, something that we cover in this video so you could practice, so you can print it out, put it on your desk, and never ever forget what's the right way to use prepositions in English. It's not correct to say never forget what's the right way. It's not a direct question. It's not correct to say never forget what's the right way. We have to say never forget what the right way is. Or it's even better to say never forget the right way to use prepositions in English. First, this is not correct. And some Americans would even say, I'm gonna do shopping. This is like the very, very contracted version of it. So what Americans do, they take those smaller words and they pronounce them in a way that is easier for them in daily speech. You cannot say, I'm gonna do shopping. If you use the verb do, you have to say do the shopping. Do the shopping not do shopping. And what about ama? Don't say ama. You might hear it, but it doesn't sound like good English. 
If you want to reduce it, reduce it to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the shopping is correct. I'm going to do the shopping or I'm going to do the shopping. But avoid using I'm. -a. Say I'm going to or I'm gonna. I'm going to do the shopping. Or you can say I'm going to go shopping. But don't say I'm going to do shopping. This is not correct. Let's practice. Are you going to do the shopping today? That's right. I'm going to do the shopping too. When are you going to go shopping? Are you going to go shopping today or tomorrow? That's right, I'm gonna go shopping today. Today we're gonna to look at some common pronunciation and grammar mistakes. Let's get started. It's not correct to say this. And pep talk would be, you're amazing. You're gonna do it, you're gonna make it. That's right, we cannot say you gonna do it and you gonna make it. Gonna is a reduction of going to. When I use going to, I have ing. So I need another action. You are going to, with the reduction, you're gonna. We have to make the contraction with you are, pronunciation, you're. When you use the reduction, gonna, always make the contraction, you're. I cannot say you are gonna. I need the contraction, you're, you're gonna. So, you're, it's a small sound, but it's very important. You're gonna do it, you're gonna make it. Pronunciation of gonna, we use the short uh sound, like cup and up, for both syllables. Gonna, 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 gonna. Same sound, both syllables. Uh, gonna. You're gonna do it. You're gonna make it. So it's correct to say, you're going to make it, and you're going to do it. You can use going to, or you can say gonna. But when you're writing, it's better to write going to. You say gonna but you write going to. Writing gonna is correct in informal English. You see it sometimes with song lyrics, but when you write formally, write going to. But when you talk, say gonna, it's fine. You're gonna do it, you're gonna make it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna make it. Example with they. I cannot say they gonna, I say they're gonna. They are, make the contraction with the R sound, er, er, er. They're, they're gonna. They're gonna cook dinner. They're gonna cook dinner tonight. Let's practice. Are they gonna cook dinner tonight? That's right. They're gonna cook dinner tonight. Make that sound. Er, er, they're, they're gonna. Also, when I say we are, we are going to, with a contraction, we're, we're. Not we're, but we're, we're, we're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna cook dinner tonight. We're gonna. We're gonna cook dinner tonight. Let's practice. Are we gonna cook dinner tonight? That's right. We're gonna cook dinner tonight. And if you talk about he or she, you have to say he is and she is, but make the contraction. If you do the reduction, gonna, always make the contraction. I cannot say he is gonna, but he's gonna. He is, contraction, he's. He's going to cook dinner. He's going to. He's going to cook dinner. Let's practice. Is he going to cook dinner tonight? That's right. He's going to cook dinner tonight. And with she, we use the action is. Make the contraction. She's. She's. She's going to. She's going to do the laundry. She's going to do the laundry today. Let's practice. Is she going to do the laundry today? That's right, she's gonna do the laundry today. Now let's talk about I. With I, we need I am, but you have to make the contraction if you do the reduction gonna. So I am, contraction, I'm. But we don't say I'm, we say um, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna call you later. I'm gonna call you later. And when people say I'm gonna, sometimes you might hear I'm gonna, I'm gonna. If it's a very long idea, they'll do another reduction and they'll say I'm gonna. I'm going to be here for about five or ten more minutes. You might hear it. You don't have to say it. I'm going to share with you a breathing technique in just a minute. I'm going to spend a lot of time working on it. I'm going to start by dicing my half a spare onion. Today I'm going to share with you a communication tool. So that's what I'm going to do with a potato masher. So today I'm going to show you how to grow mushrooms. Say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to be here for about five or ten more minutes. I'm going to. 
I'm going to cook dinner tonight. Let's practice. Are you going to cook dinner tonight? That's right. I'm going to cook dinner tonight. Very good. So remember, it's okay to use gonna when you're talking. It's very common. But don't forget the contraction. You're gonna. They're gonna. We're gonna. Make that R sound. Er, er, er. We're gonna. They're gonna. You're gonna. And of course, with he and she, he's gonna, she's gonna, and I, um, um, I'm gonna. This is not correct. Your vocabulary and speak better English. I have a little test for you that you can take to find out what's the best way for you to learn English. And it's completely free. The link is down in the first comment. Subscribe for more. That's right. It's not correct to say, I have a little test for you that you can take to find out what's the best way for you to learn English. It's a long sentence. So what's the problem? Well, when I say, what's the best way for you to learn English, what's is a contraction. What is? What is the best way for you to learn English? When I say, what is the best way or what's the best way, this is a question structure. We use this question structure only for a direct question. A direct question starts with a question word. What's the best way? You start with what. What is a question word. That makes it a direct question, and that is how we use this structure. What's the best way for you to learn English? That's a direct question, and that is correct. But if I don't ask a question, and I say, I have a little test for you that you can take to find out what is the best way, is not correct. We have to change the structure. We have to move the verb. We have to say, what the best way is. This is a positive structure. And this is what we need for this sentence. I have a little test for you that you can take to find out what the best way is for you to learn English. If you're not making a question, you have to use the positive structure. What the best way is. I want to find out what the best way is. We use a positive structure. So it's correct to say, I have a little test for you that you can take to find out what the best way is for you to learn English. Let's look at some other examples. Example, where is the bathroom? Where is the bathroom or where's the bathroom is a direct question. But if I say, do you know, this is an indirect question. So we have to use a positive structure. Do you know where the bathroom is? I cannot say, do you know where's the bathroom? Do you know where is the bathroom it is not correct. Do you know where the bathroom is? And then you answer, I don't know. I don't know where is the bathroom. We cannot say this. It's, I don't know where the bathroom is because it's not a direct question. We have to use the positive structure. Let's practice. Do you know where the bathroom is? That's right. I don't know where the bathroom is. Or what if the answer is positive? I know where the bathroom is. Again, we use a positive structure because it's not a direct question. I know where the bathroom is. Let's practice. Do you know where the bathroom is? That's right. I know where the bathroom is. So remember, only use a question structure when you're asking a direct question that starts with a question word. This is not correct. And another thing that you might have noticed when we say what do, so we have T at the end of the word what and we have D at the beginning of the word do, we kind of invent a new sound here. Instead of saying, what do you do? We say, what do you do? So there is a sound, ch, which uh, appears in the middle. Again, this is a way to make your speech smoother. And this is what all native speakers do. For example, what do you do for a living? What do you do for a living? What you do? What you do or what you do is not a correct pronunciation for what do you do. What do you do is pronounced like this. What do you do? What do you? What do you? Making a fast D. Not do, but duh. What do you? What do you? What do you do for a living? So, what do you do for a living? I work construction, local residential. So, uh, what do you do for a living? Mm, I'm a writer. Let's talk about the question. What do you do? If someone says, So, what do you do? It's a question for job. They're asking you what your job is. But they can also say, What do you do for a living? For a living is just extra. You don't have to say it. So the two questions are, what do you do? Or what do you do for a living? The for is pronounced fur, for a, for a living. 
So, what do you do for a living? This is a question, what is your job? For a living means like for money. So, pronunciation, what do you do? What do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. I'm a YouTuber. What do you do for a living? Very good. Let's hear some examples. Daddy, what do you do when you go away for work? Well, what do you do then? I remember thinking, now what do you do when you love something but it stops loving you back? So what do you do now? Now let's talk about what you do with the j j sound. Like jump and juice. What'd you do? What you do is a pronunciation for what did you do. When asking a question about the past, for your past actions, question, what'd you do? What'd you do yesterday? What'd you do last weekend? What did you do can be pronounced, what'd you do? You don't have to pronounce it like this. You can say, what did you do? And that's fine. But you will hear, what'd you do? I can't, where's the aspirin? What'd you do? What'd you do to your face? What'd you do? What'd you do that for? So what'd you do today? So what'd you do today, Dad? Well. What did you do with the body? What did you do to him? So what'd you do today? What did you do with the leads? What'd you do yesterday? Yesterday, I went to the store. What'd you do yesterday? Very good. And now let's talk about what you do. Making the ch, -ch sound like chicken. What you do. This is completely different. This is not correct what you do. But you can say what you doing. What you doing. And this is the pronunciation for what are you doing. What are you doing is correct pronunciation. But sometimes people say what you doing. So what you doing is correct pronunciation for what are you doing. The clip that she used of the cartoon of the little girl saying what you do was cut short. What you do for a living? What you do for a living? What you do? The complete phrase was what you doing. And this is a phrase she says all the time on this TV show. The TV show is Phineas and Ferb. And this girl always asks the same question when she sees the two boys. She always says, what you doing? What you doing? Let's hear the complete clip. Hey, Phineas. Hey, Isabella. What you doing? Building a roller coaster. In your backyard? Some of it. Wow. Hey, Phineas. Oh, hey, Isabella. What you doing? Building a beach. Check it out. Hi, Phineas. Oh, hi, Isabella. What you doing? We're entering the Swamp Oil 500 today. Hi, Phineas. What you doing? It's a surprise. Can I help? We could use a lookout. You got it. Hey, Phineas. What you doing? Verb and I are working on designs for our new clothing line. Take a look at what we've got so far. Very impressive. So never say what you do. It's what you doing. It's what are you doing. Reduced what you doing. Hi, Tracy. What you doing? What you doing in here? What you doing? Paul has an interview. I'm just tagging along. Hey, baby. I was about to hang up. What you doing? So today I'm cleaning my house. What about you? What you doing today? Very good. Another use of whatcha is what you been doing. What you been doing is a reduction of what have you been doing. What have you been doing? You can reduce it to what have, what have, what have you been doing? It's a question from the past to the present. A question for your action. It's a question from the past to the present. What have you been doing? What have you been doing? Or some people say what you been doing. Whatcha with a ch sound like chicken? Whatcha been doing? What you been doing? What you been doing this morning? Have what? Report. What have you been doing? What have you been doing? You lost weight. What have you been doing here? Let's practice. I haven't seen you in a long time. What you been doing? Very good. Or I can use whatcha with what you been up to. This is another way to ask the same question. This is the same question. What you've been up to is the same as what you've been doing. Up to is in place of doing. It's the same structure. What have you been up to? Reduced, what have you been up to? It's a question for your actions. The same as what have you been doing? And you can reduce it more. You can say, what have you been up to or what you've been up to? People say both. What have you been up to? Nothing. What have you been up to lately? What have you been up to lately? 
What have you been up to? Hey, so what have you been up to <laughs> lately, Charlie? Uh, what have you been up to? What you been up to? My own business. They're both correct. Pronunciation. What you, what you been up to? Let's practice. I haven't seen you in a long time. What you been up to? Very good. So remember, question for job, what do you do? Or what do you do for a living? Never whatcha, never whatcha. It's what do you, what do you do? What'd you do is good for a question about past. What did you do or what'd you do? What'd you do yesterday? And whatcha is always used with a continuous action, with ing. In the present, what you doing? What are you doing right now? Or in the future, what you doing tomorrow? Or talking about continuous action from the past to the present with questions like what you been doing or what you been up to. This is not correct. This is the most amazing piece of cloth I ever wore. That's right. You cannot wear a piece of cloth. What is a cloth? This is a cloth. It's a washcloth. Or you could say it's a rag. It's a dish rag, depending on how you use it. I use this in the sink to wash dishes, so I call it a dish rag. But if you use it to take a shower, then it's a washcloth. This is a cloth. A piece of cloth would be a piece of this. But you don't wear that. Pronunciation, cloth. Cloth, using the aw sound like ball and call. Aw, aw. Cloth. And the TH with no voice, just air. S -s -s. Cloth. Cloth is countable. This is a cloth. You wear clothes, or you can say clothing. Clothes is more common, but sometimes you'll hear clothing. I'm wearing clothes, or you can say I'm wearing clothing. How about you? Are you wearing clothes? That's good. Pronunciation clothes. Use the long O like no and go, clo, and the Z sound like zebra, z, clothes, clothes. I'm wearing clothes. Pronunciation, clothing. Use the long O like no and go. Use the TH with a voice, th, th, like this and that. Clothes, clothing, clothing. So what if you want to count clothes? If you want to count clothing, you want to talk about one item. Sometimes you hear an article, an article of clothing. It's formal, but sometimes you hear it, an article of clothing. Sometimes you'll hear a garment. A garment is one article of clothing. It's countable. This is a garment. So clothes and clothing are not countable. You can say an outfit. This is a nice outfit. But you're talking about the shirt and the pants. So normally if we count clothing, we just say the name of what it is. For example, that's a nice shirt. Or these are my favorite jeans. So remember, this is a cloth and I'm wearing clothes. Or, more formal, you can say clothing. But clothes and clothing are not countable. It's not correct to say this. And in this example, a friend suggests to write off, I don't know, whatever you think is not a write-off. It's not correct to say a friend suggests to write off expensive jewelry. When you say suggest, you cannot use the infinitive. You cannot say a friend suggests to. We have to change the verb to a gerund. That's with ing. So remember, after suggest and after recommend, we cannot use an infinitive. We cannot use to plus a simple action. In both cases, we have to use a gerund. That's a verb plus ing. Example, they suggest exercising every day. I change the verb exercise with ing. That's a gerund. Or recommend is the same structure. They recommend exercising every day. Let's practice. Do they suggest exercising every day? That's right, they suggest exercising every day. Let's practice. Do they recommend exercising every day? That's right, they recommend exercising every day. I can change the verb to the past. Recommend in the past, recommended. Suggest in the past, suggested. Example, he suggested going to that new restaurant. Or I can use recommend in the past. He recommended going to that new restaurant. After recommend and suggest, we use the gerund. That's the action with ing, going. Let's practice. 
Did he suggest going to that new restaurant? That's right. He suggested going to that new restaurant. Let's practice with recommend. Did he recommend going to that new restaurant? That's right. He recommended going to that new restaurant. But what if you want to include another person? If you want to include another person, the structure is very different and very strange. Let's take a look. I cannot say he recommended me to exercise. I have to use that. He recommended that I exercise. We cannot use to, we use that. Plus a new person, I, a subject pronoun, and a simple action. Now in the example, he suggested, that's in the past. But the verb exercise is in present. That's right, we don't change exercise to the past. We just change the first verb, suggested. He suggested that I exercise. Or I can say, he suggested that you exercise. Let's practice. Did he suggest that you exercise? That's right. He suggested that I exercise. And we use the same structure for recommend. If you want to put another person after recommend, use that. He recommended that I exercise. Or he recommended that you exercise. Or he recommended that she exercise. That's right. After she, we don't change the verb. We don't say she exercises. That's a routine, but this is not a routine. This is something that may or may not happen in the future. And that's the reason we don't change the verb. It's in a simple form. He recommended that she exercise. He recommended that she exercise every day. Let's practice. Did he recommend that she exercise every day? That's right. He recommended that she exercise every day. Another strange thing about this structure is if you want to use the verb to be. We don't use is or are. We use be. But no to. Just the verb be. Example. He suggested that she be on time for work. Not she is on time. It's not a routine. It's something that may or may not happen. So we use be. He suggested or he recommended that she be on time. Both verbs use the same structure. He suggested or he recommended. He recommended that she be on time for work. Let's practice. Did he recommend that she be on time for work? That's right. He recommended that she be on time for work. It's also not correct to say this. When you cough up the truth, you basically say the truth that you've been hiding. It's not correct to say you say the truth you've been hiding. When we talk about the truth, we cannot use say. We have to use the verb tell. Tell the truth is correct. Say the truth is not correct. So you can say, you tell the truth you've been hiding. Example, tell the truth. Right now, I use the continuous action, telling the truth. Is he telling the truth? No, he's not telling the truth. Let's practice. Is he telling the truth? That's right. He's not telling the truth. So I can say, he's lying. Or I can use tell in the expression, he's telling a lie. Let's look at the difference. Tell the truth. Tell a lie. It's different. We say, the truth, because there is only one truth. Only one truth exists. It's the only one, so I use specific the. Tell the truth. But lie, there are many lies, and this is just one of many lies, so we use a for one of many. Tell a lie. So remember the two expressions. Tell the truth and tell a lie. I can say he's lying or he's telling a lie. Let's practice. Is he telling the truth? That's right, he's not telling the truth. Is he telling a lie? That's right, he's telling a lie. Let's talk about some expressions like tell the truth, tell a lie, and tell a story, or tell stories. With these expressions, we're using tell, and we don't have to use another person. We don't have to include another person after tell, which is important because normally you do. After tell, we always have a person. Tell is person to person. I tell you, you tell me, 
in the past. He told them, she told us. With tell and told, we always have another person, an object after the verb. But with these expressions, we don't have to do that. You can, but you don't have to. So I can say, he's telling the truth, or he's telling me the truth. I can say he's telling a lie, or he's telling him a lie. You can include the object, but you don't have to. That's why they're special. Example, she's telling a story. She's telling a story to her grandchildren. Or she's telling her grandchildren a story. They're all correct. Let's practice. Is she telling a story? That's right, she's telling a story. Is she telling a story to her grandkids? That's right, she's telling a story to her grandkids. Is she telling her grandkids a story? That's right, she's telling her grandkids a story. This is also not correct. But the second thing that you can do is take one of my courses. Uh, I have a course that is specifically for people probably like you, intermediate, have a lot of knowledge, but are afraid to speak. We focus a lot on how to build your speech that it sounds naturally. Like It's not correct to say it sounds naturally. Sound is a linking verb. We can't use adverbs after linking verbs. We have to say it sounds natural. And we also say so that. We try to build your speech so that it sounds natural. The that doesn't sound drive. natural at all. And that's a horse tranquilizer. Doesn't sound natural when I curse. Our next one, sounds. Sounds correct or sounds correctly. And they can tell you whether it sounds correctly. That's right. It's not correct to say sounds correctly. Because sounds is a special action. When you talk about senses like sounds, tastes, smells, we cannot use li. You cannot use the adverb form correctly. You have to use the adjective form correct. So it sounds correct. It looks correct. Remember, all the senses don't use adverb correctly. Use the adjective correct. It sounds correct. It looks correct. What do you think? Does that sound correct to you? That sounds correct to me. Very good. Today we're going to take a closer look on how Americans really pronounce words. So let's get started. First, this is not correct. Now this one is cool. I bought almond milk. I bought, bought. This is called glottal stop. And it's a stop that you make with your throat. So instead of saying bought, you say bought. It is a fast D. Bought, bought, bought almond milk. I bought almond milk today. The T is between vowels phonetically. Bada, bada. So we use a fast D. Bought almond milk. Bought, bought almond milk. She bought almond milk. Not a glottal T or a stop T. A stop T is when you put the tongue up and you stop the air. Bought, bought. If you have a consonant after bought, then you use a stop T. I bought the car. I bought the car. But if you have a vowel after bought, then it changes to a fast D because the T is between vowels. Bought, a, bought almond milk. Let's look at some other examples. He bought a new house. We see bought, the T, is before a vowel. So that puts the T between vowels. It's pronounced as a fast D. He bought a, bought a, he bought a new house. Not he bought a new house, but he bought a. Link the words. He bought a new house. Let's practice. Did he buy a new house? That's right, he bought a new house. Another example. I don't have a lot of time. I've only got a minute. I've only got a minute. Gotta. The T and got is between vowels, so it's a fast D. I've only gotta, gotta, I've only got a minute. Example. He doesn't have a lot of time. He's only got a minute. Let's practice. Does he have a lot of time? That's right. He doesn't have a lot of time. He's only got a minute. So we see the pronunciation of words then with T can change. Words like bought and got. There are stop T's if there's a consonant after it or if there's nothing after it. But if there's a vowel after it, 
It's a fast D. When you link the words, it changes to a fast D. She bought almond milk. He bought a new house. He's only got a minute. But what if there's a consonant after? For example, she bought some almond milk. Well, if you have a consonant with the S sound after the T, then it's a stop T. She bought some. She bought some. Bought. Stop the air by putting your tongue up. Bought. Linking the sounds to the S. Bought. Bought some. She bought some almond milk. In that case, it's a stop T. This is also not correct. And the first T in this phrase, in the word it, is replaced with a D. And uh, the second T in the out is actually omitted. It's check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Something like that. When I say check it out, the T in out is not omitted. You cannot omit the T in the word out. It's a stop T. Out, out. You put the tongue up and you stop the air. Out. It's not ow. Out. You put the tongue up. Out. Check it out. Check it out. It's not check it out. Let's talk about the T in it. It is a fast D. It is not a regular D. It is a fast D. Check it. Check it. It's not check it out. It's a fast D. Check it out. Check it out. I call it a fast D. Some people call it a flap T. I call it a fast D. Da -da 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 -da. Check it. Check it out. But it's not a regular D. And the reason the T makes this sound, this fast D sound, is because the T in it is between vowels. Just like he bought a new house. The T is between vowels. It's a fast D. Check it out. Check it out. We see this with words like better, water, bottle. The T is between vowels phonetically, so it's a fast D. The same thing with check it out. Example, my friend bought a new car. You want to go check it out? Yeah, let's go check it out. Let's practice. My friend bought a new car. Do you want to go check it out? That's right. Let's go check it out. This is also not correct. Right. Am I right? Some people do not pronounce T at the end of the word right. It's not true to say that some people don't pronounce the T. We pronounce the T. It's a stop T. Am I right? It's not am I right. Right? I have to put my tongue up and stop the air. Right. Right. Listen to the difference. If I don't use a stop T, it sounds like this. Right. Right. If I use a stop T, it sounds like this. Right. Right. I stop the air. It's not am I right. It's am I right. Let's look at some other examples. For example, play versus plate. Play, there's no T at the end. Play, play football, play basketball. But plate, there's a T at the end and it's a stop T. You have to stop the air with your tongue up. Plate, plate, plate or play. They are different. Example, is she right? No, she's not right. Right, put the tongue up to stop the air. Let's practice. Is she right? No, she's not right. People pronounce the T. This is also not correct. Let's look at another sentence. They sent me a great gift. See? No T. Great gift. A great gift. There is a T. It's a stop T. I cannot say it's a gray gift. A gray gift? Gray is a color. If I say a gray gift, that means the gift is the color gray. I have to use a stop T. Great. I stop the air. I put my tongue up. Great gift. It's a great gift. Example. He bought a new car for his wife. Is that a great gift? Yeah, that's a great gift. Not a gray gift, but a great gift. A great gift. And I can say it's a great car. It's a great car. Not a gray car, but a great car. Do you hear the difference? If I say it's a gray car, that means the color of the car is gray. It's a gray car. That's when you don't pronounce the T. It's a gray car. But the word great has a T and we pronounce it with a stop T. It's a great car. 
Listen to the difference. It's a great car. It's a gray car. There is a pronunciation difference. We pronounce the T. So yeah, it's a great car. Let's practice. Is it a great car? That's right. It's a great car. Let's look at this example. Another example of a T we pronounce with a stop T. Hot coffee. Hot coffee. It's not ha coffee. Ha coffee. You have to stop the air and make a stop T. Hot coffee. Hot coffee. She's drinking hot coffee. Let's practice. Is she drinking hot coffee? That's right. She's drinking hot coffee. And let's compare that and that. You cannot say that. You have to use a stop T. That. The tongue comes up and stops the air. Example, what's that? I cannot say what's that. You have to pronounce the T with a stop T. What's that? What's that? It's also not correct to say this. <laughs> I just love my today's outfit because it allows me to do so many. You cannot say my today's outfit. We cannot use these two together. So how do you say it correctly? We say my outfit today. Do you like my outfit today? I'm wearing my favorite green shirt. I like her outfit today. Let's practice. Do you like her outfit today? That's right. I like her outfit today too. And with the word outfit, both T's are stop T's. It's not outfit. It's outfit. The T's are not silent. We pronounce them. I like her outfit. It's also not correct to say this. And what I love about English is there is the so much freedom in ways how you pronounce certain things. We cannot say in ways how you pronounce. The reason is we cannot put how and the way together because they mean the same thing. So we have to eliminate one. You can say in ways you pronounce or you can say how you pronounce. But we cannot put way and how together. Example, I cannot say I like the way how she dances. I have to use one or the other. You can say I like how she dances or you can say I like the way she dances, but not the way and how together. Let's practice. Do you like the way she dances? Very good. I like the way she dances too. Let's practice. Do you like how she dances? I like how she dances too. It's also not correct to say this. I had hard time understanding a lot of American songs. That's right. We cannot say I had hard time understanding. Time in this case is countable. So we have to use a, I had a, I had a hard time understanding. Example, she had a hard time finding a parking spot. Remember with hard time, we use a gerund finding. She had a hard time finding a parking spot. Remember not she had hard time. We need a, she had a, she had a hard time finding a parking spot. Let's practice. Did she have a hard time finding a parking spot? That's right. She had a hard time finding a parking spot. So remember, pronounce the T's at the end of your words. They're not silent. They're stop T's. That's great. Not that's gray. That's great. Use a stop T. Today, we're going to talk about two confusing words and some mistakes to avoid. Let's get started. It's not correct to say this. What about this one? Mm, tired is what? Intermediate? Pre-intermediate? Beginner? Elementary? What about weary? That's right. The word is pronounced weary, not wary. Pronunciation, weary. Using the long E sound like green beans. Together with the R, ear. The sound like ear. Weir. Weary. Weary is a synonym of tired. He looks very weary after a long day. He looks very tired. Weary. Weary is a synonym of tired, but it's not common. It's not used in daily conversational American English. We say tired. So what is wary? Wary is a different word. Wary means to be cautious of something because it could be dangerous or bad for you. Wary. Pronunciation, wary. Using the air sound like chair and hair. Air. Where. Where. 
like where is my car or I wear clothes. Wear, wary, be wary of strangers. Example, my dog is wary of strangers. That means he keeps his distance. He's cautious. He stays away. He's wary. My dog is wary of strangers. He's wary of strangers because he thinks they might be dangerous. Let's practice. Is the dog wary of strangers? That's right. The dog is wary of strangers. Another example, you should be wary of car salesmen. Don't trust them. Keep your distance. You should be wary of car salesmen. Let's practice. Should you be wary of car salesmen? That's right. You should be wary of car salesmen. Be careful. Be cautious. Be wary. So remember, there are two different words. Weary, synonym of tired, but not very common. And wary, to be cautious of something, to keep your distance. Be wary. There is a subtle difference, so watch me carefully. A lot of people say police, which is not right. It's police. Police. <laughs> kind of blowing a candle. We do not say police. You're not blowing out a candle. The word is police. Police. We don't use the ah uh sound like stop and hot. We use the uh, uh. The short sound uh like cup and up. P, P, police. The stress is on the second syllable, police. It's not on the first syllable. We do not say police. It's police, police. Because the stress is on the second syllable, the first syllable is pronounced relaxed. Uh, uh, p, p, police, police. Remember, with police, always say the, the police. And remember, police is a special word. It's always in the plural. We say the police are coming. You cannot say is. You have to use the plural action are. The police are coming. It's not correct to say this. Try to pronounce it with me. Stomach. So it's going to sta with an A, sta, and then mic with an E. Stomach. My stomach is full. This is the right way to pronounce this word. It's not correct to say stomach. It's not ah uh, like father. It's not an A. It's a short sound, uh, like cup, and up, and cut, uh, uh, st, st, stomach, stomach. Put the stress on the first syllable, stomach, stomach, a closed sound, uh, uh, stomach. Example, sometimes my stomach hurts, stomach. It's not correct to say this. The next word is pizza. And here, you can pronounce it like pizza, uh, with a stop, with kind of t, with air coming out of your mouth, pizza. Because some people say pizza, which is not right. You kind of have to stop in the middle of the word and say pizza. That's right, we don't say pizza, pizza. The word is pizza, pizza. The first vowel is a long E, like green beans. P, pizza. We don't use the short sound I like milk. It's not pizza, it's P, pizza. The second syllable is not stressed. It's pronounced with the relaxed U, uh. pizza, pizza. Use the relaxed U uh, like cup and up. It's not pizza, it's pizza, U, uh, U, uh. pizza, pizza. So when you say the word pizza, Remember, the second vowel, uh, uh, is a short sound like cup and up, not an open sound, ah, pizza. It's not ah like hot and stop. It's uh like cup and up, pizza. It's a closed sound for the second syllable. And make sure the stress is on the first syllable. Pizza, not pizza, but pizza. I would like pepperoni and mushrooms on my pizza. What would you like on your pizza? If you want to be kind of really, really conservative, the actual pronunciation is status. And again, you can continue saying status, but if it's the time when you decide how to pronounce the word status, it's kind of more academic. The word is status. 
In America, we always say status. We never say status. Status is not more correct. It's not better in America. It's just British. They say status in England. But in America, we always say status. It is the only correct pronunciation in American English. Status. We're using the short A sound like apple and black cat. Sta. Status. The T in the middle is pronounced like a fast D. Status. Status. The second syllable is pronounced with a relaxed uh, uh, like cup and up. Status. 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 For example, a status symbol. Some people like to buy expensive cars as a status symbol. I want you to learn how to pronounce them in the right way so you can sound more American and more natural. If you're interested, please continue watching this vlog. It's called Mercedes. Remember, Mercedes. We do not say Mercedes. The last vowel is not I like milk and this is. It's the long E like green beans. We say Mercedes. Mercedes. The final sound is not s like star, it's z like zebra. Mercedes. Mercedes. Put the stress on the second syllable. Mercedes. Remember, it's not Mercedes, it's Mercedes. Use a long e sound at the end. E's. E's. Mercedes. Example. I don't have a Mercedes. I have a Honda. And remember, when you're talking about cars, we say for one, a. Uh, I have a Honda. I don't have a Mercedes. It's not correct to say this. Car just passed by and the car is called Porsche and that's the right way to pronounce it. Because it's a German name, the stress goes yeah. to the first part of the word and we say Porsche. Remember, never say no, Porsche. Like never, voice. never. Yeah. And don't say latte. This is like the worst thing I've ever heard. It's latte. Latte is Italian word. So, if you drink coffee, it's latte, not latte. So we're looking at the pronunciation of two words. Porsche and latte. First, let's talk about Porsche. In America, People pronounce this word two ways. Porsche and Porsche. Porsche is more correct according to the original pronunciation. But like I said, in America, people say both. You will hear both. Porsche and Porsche. But you will never hear Porsche. You will never hear the long A sound for the last syllable. It's always Porsche or Porsche. Now the last syllable is pronounced uh, uh, like cup and up. Not a, like say and pay, but uh, like cup and up. Porsche. It's a relaxed sound. The syllable is not stressed. The stress is on the first syllable. Porsche. Porsche. Example, I don't have a Porsche. When I talk about a car, I say uh, I don't have a Porsche. I have a Honda. But if I talk about the company, Porsche, I don't say a. Uh. Porsche is made in Germany. Porsche is made in Germany. Or you can talk about the cars. Remember, the cars are countable, so I can also say Porsches. Porsches, more than one car, are made in Germany. So I can say Porsche is made in Germany or Porsches are made in Germany. Both are correct. Now let's talk about latte. We say latte. We don't say latte. The last syllable is the long A. It's not stressed, but we use the long A like say and pay. Latte. Make a long sound. Not the short latte, but the long A. Latte. The first syllable, ah, latte. It's the short O sound like hot and stop. It's a short open sound. Ah, ah. Latte. Latte. Put the stress on the first syllable. Latte. Latte is countable. It's a prepared drink. So we say, uh, I would like a latte. Or maybe I would like two lattes. Garbage. Some people say garbage. Garbage disposal? But it's actually garbage. Garbage. Absolute garbage. Just exaggerating it. Garbage is wrong. Garbage 
is right. Garbage. But I know where this mispronunciation is coming from because it's written B A G E, beige, right? But it's actually garbage. No, Americans are not wrong. They're not pronouncing this word wrong. There are three pronunciations for this word garbage. Garbage. The second syllable is not stressed. Garbage. For this syllable, we have three pronunciations. You can use the a uh sound, like cup and up. Garbage, garbage. The schwa sound is an unstressed uh, uh, like cup and up. So we can make that sound. Garbage. But you can also pronounce it with the short e, eh, like eggs and bed. Garbage, garbage. Because it's not stressed. And the third correct pronunciation is ij, ij, using the short i like this is, milk, i, i, garbage, garbage. So three pronunciations are correct. When the syllable is not stressed, you can pronounce it with the a, uh, the e, eh, or the i sound. Garbage, garbage, and garbage. All three are correct. Example, salad. Again, the second syllable is not stressed, so you have three choices. You can use the schwa, salad, uh, uh, uh sound, salad. You can use the e eh sound, like eggs, salad, salad. Or the i eh sound, like milk, and this, salad, i, eh, i, eh, salad. Just make sure you put the stress on the first syllable. Salad, garbage. Example. Garbage is the same thing as trash, and it's not countable. We cannot say a garbage or two garbages. It's just garbage. There's garbage in the street. We need to clean up the garbage. The next word is niche, and I say niche, but really, it's better to say niche. And niche is more conservative, more academic, and this is the better way to pronounce the word that refers to a special role or place. Niche instead of niche. It's not more correct or better to say niche. We have two pronunciations and they are the same. Some people say niche and some people say niche. Niche is closer to the original pronunciation that is French. But in America, people say both equally. One is not better or worse than the other. You can say niche or you can say niche. Let's practice with the word police. Did you call the police? Yes, I called the police. Why did you call the police? I called the police because my neighbors were allowed. Did she call the police? Why did she call the police? That's right, she called the police because her neighbors were allowed. Very good. Let's practice with the word stomach. Does your stomach hurt? Yes, my stomach hurts. Why does your stomach hurt? My stomach hurts because I ate something bad. Does her stomach hurt? That's right, her stomach hurts. Why does her stomach hurt? That's right, her stomach hurts because she ate something bad. Very good. Let's practice with the word pizza. What do you want on your pizza? I want mushrooms on my pizza. What does she want on her pizza? That's right, she wants mushrooms on her pizza. Let's practice with the word status. Do you think an expensive car can be a status symbol? Yeah, an expensive car can be a status symbol. What do you think? Do you think an expensive car can be a status symbol? That's right. An expensive car can be a status symbol. Let's practice with the word Mercedes. Do you have a Mercedes? No, I don't have a Mercedes. I have a Honda. Does she have a Mercedes? That's right. She doesn't have a Mercedes. She has a Honda. Very good. Let's practice with the word Porsche. Where is Porsche made? Porsche is made in Germany. Where is Porsche made? That's right. Porsche is made in Germany. Very good. Let's practice with the word latte. What would you like to drink? I would like a latte. What would she like to drink? That's right. She would like a latte. What about you? Would you like a latte too? Very good. Let's practice with the word garbage. Is there a lot of garbage in the street? Yes, there is a lot of garbage in the street. Is there a lot of garbage in the street? 
That's right. There's a lot of garbage in the street. Do we need to clean up the garbage? Yes, we need to clean up the garbage. What do you think? Do we need to clean up the garbage? That's right. We need to clean up the garbage. Let's practice with the word comb. Do you have a comb? Yes, I have a comb. And how often do you comb your hair? I comb my hair every day. Does she have a comb? That's right. She has a comb. And how often does she comb her hair? That's right. She combs her hair every day. Very good. It's not correct to say this. This is king bed. So king bed is usually the largest bed you can think of. That's right. We cannot say this is king bed. Bed is countable and it's one. So we have to say a, a king bed. This is a king bed. If you describe, we say a king bed is the largest bed. We have to say a before king bed. A king bed is the largest bed. It means one bed in general. So when you talk about different sized beds, make sure you say a, a twin bed, a double bed, a full bed, a queen bed, and a king bed. I don't like a king bed. I think it's too big. I prefer a queen bed. Let's practice. So do you like a king bed or a queen bed? I prefer a queen bed. What kind of bed does she prefer? Does she prefer a queen bed or a king bed? That's right. She prefers a queen bed. What about you? What bed do you prefer? A queen bed or a king bed? Very good. And it's not correct to say this. Uh, there is nothing bad in asking for a better view. We cannot use the preposition in after bad. We can say there's nothing bad about asking for a better view. So bad about is correct, but not bad in. But the best expression to use is wrong with. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Use the expression wrong with. Example, there's nothing wrong with it. You cannot say there's nothing bad in it. The expression is bad about, there's nothing bad about it. But more correct, more common English is there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Remember, a better view. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Let's practice with the expression wrong with. Is there anything wrong with asking for a better view? No, there is nothing wrong with asking for a better view. Is there anything wrong with asking for a better view? That's right. There's nothing wrong with asking for a better view. It's not correct to say this. They are the comfier slippers I've ever worn. That's right. We cannot say these are the comfier slippers I've ever worn. Comfier is to compare. You can say more comfortable or comfier. These slippers are comfier than my work shoes. You're comparing. These slippers are comfier than my work shoes. But if I say these are the comfiest, comfiest, these are the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. That means these are the best, number one slippers, most comfortable. These are the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. We cannot say these are the comfier slippers I've ever worn. We have to use est at the end. Comfiest. These are the comfiest slippers I've ever worn. And it's not correct to say this. I do not understand people who use laundry at the hotel. That's right. We cannot say I don't understand people who use laundry. If you're talking about a hotel, we say use the laundry service. You cannot say use laundry. So, I don't understand people who use the laundry service. You can also use the action do. Do laundry. When you say do laundry, you can say do the laundry. You can say do my laundry or do your laundry. Or you can just say do laundry. You don't have to say anything in the middle. So, three ways. Do the laundry, do my laundry, or do laundry. But we cannot say use laundry. Again, if you're talking about a hotel, say use the laundry service. If you're speaking more in general, do laundry, do the laundry, do your laundry. And it's not correct to say this. You can basically walk a block to use the laundry or basically I would just take enough clothes with me to not have to use the laundry. We cannot say walk a block to use a laundry. 
Laundry is not countable, so we cannot say a laundry. And we cannot say use the laundry. If you're at the hotel, you can say use the laundry service. But if you walk a block, you're going to a different place. You're going to a place to do your laundry. Remember, you can say do your laundry, do the laundry, or just do laundry. Let's practice. When you stay at a hotel, do you use the laundry service? No, I never use the laundry service at the hotel. Does she use the laundry service at the hotel? That's right. She never uses the laundry service at the hotel. Let's practice. And how often do you do laundry? I do laundry once a week. How often does she do laundry? That's right. She does laundry once a week. And it's not correct to say this. And if they like you, if they have free rooms, maybe they give you one. That's right. It's not correct to say, if they like you, maybe they give you one. This is a conditional, and we have to use will in the second part. If they like you, maybe they will give you one. We cannot say they give you one. We need to use future, will. If they like you, maybe they will. You can do contraction. They will, together, they'll, they'll, they'll give you one. If they like you, maybe they'll give you one. Let's practice. If they like you, will they give you a better room? Yes, if they like you, they will give you a better room. If they like you, will they give you a better room? That's right. If they like you, they'll give you a better room. When you tell something nice to the person who's selecting the room for you, you cannot say you tell something nice to the person. In this case, we have to use the verb say. If you say something nice to the person. Remember the difference between say and tell. Say is only information. You say something, you say nothing, or say anything. We cannot say tell. Tell is person to person. I tell you something, or you tell me something. So tell is used for person to person. I tell you, you tell me. If we don't have person to person, we use say. I say something. You say something. So I can say, I tell you something, or you tell me something. It's person to person. But if it's just one person, I say something. You say something. So you say something nice to the person, not tell. Let's practice. Did you say something nice to your friend on her birthday? Yes, I said something nice to my friend on her birthday. I said happy birthday. Did she say something nice to her friend? That's right, she said something nice to her friend. Today we're going to look at these two confusing words. Let's get started. First, it's not correct to say this. Okay, we're entering produce section. At a produce section, you have different vegetables and fruit. That's right. We cannot say, I am entering produce section. First, let's look at the pronunciation. The word is produce. We use the long O like no and go. Pro. Produce. The first syllable is stressed, so produce. Produce. Produce is a noun. Produce means fruit and vegetables. You can also use produce as an adjective to describe the section of the grocery store. But when we talk about the section, we have to say the. The produce section. We need the article the. You can say, we're entering the produce section. So let's talk about produce. Produce is another name for fruits and vegetables. I buy produce at the farmer's market. I try to buy produce at the farmer's market. Sometimes I buy produce at a grocery store. Let's practice. Do you try to buy produce at the farmer's market? That's right, me too. I try to buy produce at the farmer's market. Let's practice. Do you buy produce at the grocery store sometimes? That's right, me too. Sometimes I buy produce at the grocery store. Now we compare the word produce to another word that looks exactly the same. This word is produce. Produce is a verb. It means to make or manufacture products. Pronunciation, produce. We put the stress on the second syllable, produce, produce. The first syllable is pronounced with the relaxed uh sound, like cup and up, uh, uh, pr, pr. 
pr, produce. Produce is a verb. Example, in the factory they produce a lot of goods. That's right, goods is another name for products. They produce a lot of goods in the factory. Let's practice. Do they produce a lot of goods in the factory? That's right, they produce a lot of goods in the factory. Another example for produce, we talk about movies. The producer is the person who produces the movie. Example, Steven Spielberg produced that movie. Produce in the past, produced, st, making the T sound. Example, who produced that movie? Ah, Steven Spielberg produced that movie. Let's practice. Who produced that movie? That's right, Steven Spielberg produced that movie. So remember, these are two different words. Sometimes you say produce using the long O. Produce is another name for fruits and vegetables. And produce, spelled exactly the same, but pronounced differently, is the verb to manufacture products. Produce. We cannot say this. And overall, it was a highway robbery. The expression highway robbery is not countable. We cannot say a highway robbery. Normally, the word robbery is countable. I can say one robbery and two robberies, but highway robbery is an expression, and we do not say a. Example, it was highway robbery. You can use the expression highway robbery when someone charges you too much. When someone overcharges you, you can say it was highway robbery. Example, they charged $50 for parking. $50 for parking? That's highway robbery. Let's practice. They charged $50 for parking. Is that highway robbery? That's right. That's highway robbery. Remember, no uh. Next, let's talk about worst. So this is not correct. Oh my God, we just came back from a worst vacation. That's right, we cannot say a worst vacation. Worst is a superlative, like best. And for superlatives like worst and best, we have to say the, the best, or the worst. Remember, we have the adjective bad, the description bad. If you compare worse, this restaurant is worse than that restaurant, or number one bad, the absolute worst, the worst restaurant, number one bad of all the restaurants, the worst. The worst restaurant, the worst vacation. Example, I think McDonald's is the worst restaurant. What do you think? Is McDonald's the worst restaurant? Very good. Let's talk about this word. This word has two pronunciations. You cannot say this. And the new hotel had a very nice ambiance. That's right. You cannot say ambiance. You can say ambiance or ambience. It has two pronunciations. Ambiance or ambience. We use this word when we talk about the feeling of a place. How a place feels. If the place feels happy, if the place feels good, we say it has a good ambiance. Ambiance is countable, so we have to say a. Uh. It has a good ambiance. Let's practice. What do you think about the place? Does it have a good ambiance? That's right, it has a good ambiance. Let's look at the pronunciation of this word. Modern modern. So it's not correct to say this. 
They're modern and cool. That's right. We cannot say modern, more. It's not the long O, more. It's the short O, ah, like hot, and stop. Ah, ah, ma, modern, modern, modern. Example, this is a modern design. Modern. This is a modern design. Let's practice. Is this a modern design? That's right. This is a modern design. Let's see some more pronunciation. This is not correct. We cannot say oven. I can't turn on the oven. We use the short sound like cup and up. We say uh, uh, relax sound. Uh, oven, oven, oven. Example, he's cooking bread in the oven. Let's practice. What is he doing? Is he cooking bread in the oven? That's right. He's cooking bread in the oven. Let's hear some more pronunciation. They can tell you whether this word is actually used or not. We cannot say not. We use the short sound ah like hot and stop. The short ah sound. Not. Not. The correct pronunciation is not. Use a stop T at the end and a short O. Not. Let's talk about the pronunciation of this word gonna. Remember, this is not correct. And then they're gonna walk you through all of the different features that the app has. That's right. You cannot say they gonna. They gonna. Gonna is a reduction of going to. And because going is a continuous action, we need the action are. They are going to. They are, contraction, there. It's a small sound, but it's very important to make that R sound, there, there. They're going to, or with the reduction, they're gonna. They're gonna call me later. Not they gonna call me later, but they're gonna call me later. Like I said, it's a small sound, but it's very important to make that R sound for the contraction. They are together. They're, they're gonna. So again, they're gonna call me. They're gonna call me later. Not they gonna call me, but they're gonna call me. Er, er, they're. They're gonna call me later. Let's practice. Are they gonna call you later? That's right. They're going to call me later. So, if you want to learn to speak English correctly with correct American pronunciation, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. Today, we're going to talk about how to pronounce this word correctly. It's not correct to say, Then you store this food in the cupboard. That's right. It's not correct to say, A cupboard. It's a special word. And today we're going to talk about how to pronounce it correctly. Let's get started. A cupboard. The letter P silent. We don't pronounce the letter P. A cupboard. It's a two-syllable word. The stress is on the first syllable. A cupboard. The second syllable is not stressed. We pronounce it as er, like burger. A cupboard. This is a cupboard. The letter D is a stop D. Put your tongue up and stop the air. A cupboard. This is a cupboard. Let's look at some examples. He, he had a cupboard full of potions. If you've got a bunch of batteries in your cupboard... What are you doing on the cupboard? This is a cupboard. Or, this is a cabinet. Both words are correct. But I think the word cabinet is more common. This is a cabinet. I have a lot of spices in the cabinet. Do you have a lot of spices in the cabinet? Good job. Today we're going to learn how to sound more natural when we speak. Let's get started. 
First, let's watch this clip. So the next time you see a nice person, you don't say nice person, you say a cordial person or a charming person or a interesting person, but you don't use nice all the time. It's not correct to say cordial in American English. The word is pronounced cordial in American English. Cordial. Make the or sound like for and or, core. The D makes a j sound like juice and jump, core j j j. And the second syllable, uh, uh, oh. We use the sound uh like cup and up. Uh, uh, relax sound, uh, corja, corja. And the last sound is the L, but it's the dark L with the tongue in the back of the mouth. Oh, cordial, cordial. Cordial. The word cordial means nice and friendly, but it's not common in daily conversational American English. If you want to sound more natural, say he's a nice person. Say he's such a nice person. But don't say he's a cordial person. It sounds strange. It's too formal. You might hear the word cordial in formal speeches, or you might see it in formal writing, but it's not common in conversational English. Today we're going to talk about why it's not correct to say this. So compared to white collars, blue collars do more physical work, white collars do more mental work. That's right. We cannot say white collars or blue collars. We're talking about people. We're describing workers. For example, he's a blue collar worker and he's a white collar worker. But what does it mean? Well, a long time ago, if you worked in an office, you wore a white shirt with a white collar. And if you worked in a garage, if you were a mechanic, you had a blue shirt with a blue collar. So we use this to describe what kind of job you have. And when we use white collar and blue collar as a description, as an adjective, it has to stay in a singular form. We cannot change it to white collars or blue collars. Example, he's a mechanic. He's a blue collar worker. Let's practice. Is he a mechanic? Is he a blue collar worker? That's right. He's a mechanic. He's a blue collar worker. Remember, it's one worker. So we say a, uh, a blue collar worker. Let's practice. Is he an accountant? Is he a white collar worker? That's right. He's an accountant. He's a white collar worker. Remember, it's one accountant. So we say an, he's an accountant. And he's a white collar worker. For one, we say a. He's a white collar worker. We can also use white collar and blue collar to talk about jobs. Being a mechanic is a blue collar job. And being an accountant is a white collar job. So I can say he has a white collar job or he has a blue collar job. Let's practice. Does he have a white collar job? That's right. He has a white collar job. Again, job is countable. So we say a, a white collar job. Let's practice. Does he have a blue collar job? That's right. He has a blue collar job. We can also use white collar to talk about crime or criminals. Example, he stole money from his company, but he did it with his computer. So that's considered a white collar crime and he's a white collar criminal. But we don't use blue collar to talk about crime. There's no blue collar crime or blue collar criminal. They're just criminals. Let's practice. He stole money from his company using his computer. Is that a white collar crime? That's right. That's a white collar crime. Is he a white collar criminal? That's right. He's a white collar criminal. So if I want to refer to more than one person, I have to say they are white collar workers. Or I can say they are blue collar workers. I cannot say they are white collars or they are blue collars. It is not countable. We cannot put S. Let's practice. Are they white collar workers? That's right. They're white collar workers. Let's practice. Are they blue collar workers? That's right. They're blue collar workers. So remember, a white collar job is a job in the office or a job working with computers. And a blue collar job 
is working with your hands, something more physical. It's not correct to say this. So, and when my surgery finished, I fainted for like 30 seconds. That's right. We cannot say, when my surgery finished, I fainted. Finish is an action for a person. Example, I finished my job. I finished all my work. But if I talk about things like surgery or a meeting or a movie or a game, we don't use finished. I cannot say the game finished. I say the game ended or the game is over. When talking about things like events, things that have a beginning, a middle, and an end, we don't use finish. We use end or to be over. Example, when the surgery was over, I fainted. Or you can say, when the surgery ended, I fainted, but not finished. Let's practice. Is the surgery over? That's right. The surgery is not over yet. They're still operating. Let's practice. Is the game over? That's right. The game is over. Is the meeting over? That's right. The meeting is not over yet. They're still talking. Is the movie over? That's right. The movie is over. So remember, use finish for a person. I finish, you finish, they finish. But for things, things that have a beginning, middle, and an end, like events, use end or to be over. Today we're going to talk about articles. Articles are very important in English. If you don't use articles, native speakers might misunderstand you. For example, This is iron. It's not silver. It's not gold. It's iron. Am I right? This is iron. Oh, she's not talking about metal. She's talking about this object. I misunderstood her because she didn't use an article. It's a problem. So today we're going to talk about articles. Let's get started. A. Uh, A uh is for one. If you're talking about an object that you can count, for example, one fork, two forks, three forks, and you want to say one fork, you can say, this is a fork, this is one fork, or it's called a fork. Now let's listen. This is spatula. It's not correct to say, this is spatula. It's an object. You can count it. You can say, one spatula, two spatulas, three spatulas. And that's why we say, this is a spatula. This is one spatula. This is a spatula. Let's practice. What is this? That's right. This is a spatula. Good job. Let's listen. This is called peeler. It's not correct to say, this is called peeler. It's an object. You can say, one peeler, two peelers, three peelers. It's countable. So if you want to say one peeler, we say, this is a peeler. This is called a peeler one peeler. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right. It's called a peeler. Good job. Let's listen. This is called corkscrew. It's not correct to say. It's called corkscrew. It's an object. You can count it. You can say one corkscrew. And that's why we say this is called a corkscrew. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right, it's called a corkscrew. Good job. Let's listen. This is called horn. This is called horn is not correct because you can count the object. You can say one horn, two horns, three horns. This is one horn. This is a horn. This is called a horn. Let's practice. What is this called? That's right. This is called a horn. Good job. Let's listen. This glass in front of me is called windshield in the US. It's not correct to say this is windshield. 
it's an object, you can count it. You can say one windshield, two windshields, three windshields. And that's why we say this is called a windshield. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right. This is called a windshield. Good job. Let's listen. It's called emergency brake. It's not correct to say it's called emergency brake. It's an object. You can say a brake, two brakes, three brakes. But here the word emergency starts with a vowel. And that's why we say an emergency brake. It's called an emergency brake. Let's practice. What is it called? That's right, it's called an emergency brake. So remember, if a word starts with a vowel, we say an apple, an engineer, an emergency brake. And that's why it's not correct to say It's an object. You can count it. You can say one iron, two irons, three irons. The word iron starts with a vowel. And that's why we say it's called an iron. This is an iron. I have an iron. Do you have an iron? Good job. Let's listen. It has speedometer. It's not correct to say it has speedometer. It's an object. You can say one speedometer, two speedometers, three speedometers. And that's why we say it has a speedometer. It has one speedometer. The car has a speedometer. Let's practice. Does it have a speedometer? That's right. It has a speedometer. Good job. Let's listen. We have two o'clock opening next Wednesday, if that works. It's not correct to say, I have two o'clock opening. One opening, two openings, three openings. An opening. I have a two o'clock opening. Let's practice. Does she have a two o'clock opening? That's right. She has a two o'clock opening. Good job. It's not correct to say, This is bikini. That's right. It's not correct to say, this is bikini. It's an object that you can count. You can say, one bikini, two bikinis. And that's why we say, this is a bikini. A is for one. This is a bikini. A bikini is a two-piece bathing suit. I have a bikini. Or I can say, I have two bikinis. She has a bikini. Do you have a bikini? There is nothing wrong with having an accent, but if you mispronounce words, it's a problem. For example, we're in the kitchen today and we're going to go through different objects like space rack. A space rack? And now imagine talking to an American. Oh, I went to the store yesterday and I got a space rack. He'll have no idea what you're talking about. It's a problem. So today we're going to talk about how to pronounce this word correctly. Let's get started. It's called a spice rack. It comes from the word spice. We have the letter I and the silent E. We pronounce the letter I as the long I, like in hike and like. Spice. It's countable. So you can say a spice, two spices, three spices. I have a lot of spices in the cabinet. I have a lot of spices in the kitchen cabinet. I love spices. Do you have a lot of spices in the kitchen cabinet? Good job. And that's why we say a spice rack. It's called a spice rack. I don't have a spice rack. Do you have a spice rack? Good job. Like, take your effort and write the whole thing. Happy birthday. Not so hard. So it's not correct to say take your effort. You can say take your time and do the job right, but that's a different idea. Let's talk about effort. We use the action make, but we don't say make your effort. It's countable. We say make an effort. An is for one. You make an effort. So example, 
Some students make an effort in class, and some students don't make an effort in class. So if I say negative, I can say he doesn't. He doesn't make an effort in class. Or maybe he makes a little effort, but not much. Then you can say, he doesn't make much of an effort. He doesn't make much of, using the preposition of, and because it's countable, it's an, much of an effort. He doesn't make much of an effort. The idea, he makes a little effort. Let's practice. Is it true that some students don't make an effort in class? Yes, that's true. Some students don't make an effort in class. Is it true that some students don't make an effort in class? That's right, it's true. Some students don't make an effort in class. Let's practice. Does he make an effort in class? No, he doesn't make an effort in class. Does he make an effort in class? That's right, he doesn't make an effort in class. Or maybe he makes a little effort. Let's practice. Does he make much of an effort in class? No, he doesn't make much of an effort in class. Does he make much of an effort in class? That's right, he doesn't make much of an effort in class. Very good. Sometimes effort is not countable. We say make more effort or make a lot of effort. With these examples, there's no a, uh, so it's not countable. That's right, if you want to give emphasis, we say make a lot of effort. We don't say make a hard effort. You might hear a big effort or a small effort, but it's really not common. The best way to give emphasis is to say a lot of. A lot of effort. You need to make a lot of effort. Or if you're talking about more, you can say you need to make more effort. So, examples. She makes a lot of effort in class. She works very hard. But he doesn't make a lot of effort in class. So, he needs to make more effort. That's right, he needs to make more effort in class. In this case, there's no an, there's no a. Uh. It's not countable. He needs to make more effort in class. Let's practice. Does she make a lot of effort in class? Yes, she makes a lot of effort in class. Does she make a lot of effort in class? That's right, she makes a lot of effort in class. Let's practice. What about him? Does he make a lot of effort in class? No, he doesn't make a lot of effort in class. Does he make a lot of effort in class? That's right, he doesn't make a lot of effort in class. So, does he need to make more effort? Yes, he needs to make more effort. Does he need to make more effort in class? That's right, he needs to make more effort in class. So, can I use take with effort? Can I use take and effort together? Yes, you can, but it's a little different. Example, it requires effort. The job requires effort. I can say the job takes effort. The job requires a lot of effort. The job requires effort, or the job takes effort. To refer to the job, we say it. It takes a lot of effort. The idea, it requires a lot of effort. So, I can say it requires a lot of effort to learn a language. Or I can say it takes. It takes a lot of effort to learn a language. It takes a lot of time and effort to learn a language. I can change the verb take to the past, took. It took. It took a lot of effort to build the pyramids. That's right, it took a lot of time and effort to build the pyramids. They worked for a long time. Or if I talk about the future, I have it will. It will, contraction, it'll. It'll take more time It'll take more effort to go to Venus. Let's practice. Does it require a lot of effort to learn a language? Yes, it requires a lot of effort to learn a language. Does it require a lot of effort to learn a language? That's right, it requires a lot of effort to learn a language. Let's practice. Does it take a lot of time and effort to learn a language? Yes, it takes a lot of time and effort to learn a language. Does it take a lot of time and effort to learn a language? That's right, it takes a lot of time and effort to learn a language. Let's practice. 
Did it take a lot of time and effort to build the pyramids? Yes, it took a lot of time and effort to build the pyramids. Did it take a lot of time and effort to build the pyramids? That's right. It took a lot of time and effort to build the pyramids. Is it correct to say your effort? Yeah, sometimes you can say your effort, my effort, his effort, and her effort. For example, thank you. Thank you for your effort. We appreciate all your effort. So example, his boss appreciates his effort. So he got a raise. That's right. A raise is more money, a higher salary. He got a raise because his boss appreciates his effort. Or I can say his effort was appreciated by his boss. That's why he got a raise. Because his effort was appreciated by his boss. Let's practice. Does his boss appreciate his effort? Yes, his boss appreciates his effort. Did he get a raise? Yes, he got a raise. Great. Does his boss appreciate his effort? That's right. His boss appreciates his effort. Did he get a raise? That's right. He got a raise because his boss appreciates his effort. Let's practice. Was his effort appreciated by his boss? Yes, his effort was appreciated by his boss. Was his effort appreciated by his boss? That's right. His effort was appreciated by his boss. Very good. Let's practice. She's my boss and she appreciates my effort. What about your boss? Does your boss appreciate your effort? Very good. So remember, this is not correct. You cannot say this. Like, take your effort and write the whole thing. Happy birthday. Not so hard. You can say take your time, but if you use the word effort, use the verb make. You make an effort. It's countable, so we say an. You make an effort. But if you give emphasis, it's not countable. You make a lot of effort or you make more effort. Can you say take? Sure. You can say it takes effort if you mean a job requires effort. And can you say your effort and my effort? Sure, I can say thank you for your effort. Your effort is very appreciated because I appreciate all your effort. Let's talk about which. Which is a question word and it is when you have options. When you have a limited number of options or selections, we ask the question which. For example, if I have Coke, Pepsi, or Sprite, I can ask you, which soda do you prefer? Or which one do you like? Because there is a clear selection in front of you. So here we have two t-shirts. It's a clear selection, so I use the word which. Which shirt do you like? Which shirt do you prefer? Or which one do you like? But if you don't have a clear selection, and you have dozens or hundreds of options, then we don't say which, we say what. What is more general. That's why we say, what is your name? We don't say, which is your name? Because what could be anything. Because when you ask what, there are many options, not a clear selection in front of you. Let's hear an example. Which adjective means an ideal model of what is wanted? How am I supposed to know this word? Um... In this case, which is not correct because there's not a clear selection. If you're taking a multiple choice test and you have A, B, or C to choose from, then the question is which. But if you don't have a clear selection in front of you, the question is what? Today we're going to talk about this word in American pronunciation. We don't say... Studying is an endless process. That's right. In American English, we don't say process. That's British English. In England, they say process. But in America, we say process. We're using the short O, which makes the sound ah. Like stop and hot. Pra. Process. So the word process is a noun. It's countable, so we have to say for one, a, a process. It's a process. If I use a description, an adjective, I put it after a. Example, a long process, a difficult process. Example, learning a language is a difficult process. And learning a language is a long process. Let's practice. Is learning a language a long process? That's right. Learning a language is a long process. Example, learning a language can be a difficult process. Let's practice. K 
Can learning a language be a difficult process? That's right. Learning a language can be a difficult process. So remember, the British pronunciation is process. In England, they say process. What a, a long process. And in America, we don't. We say process. That will be a, a decade-long process. Today we're going to talk about what Americans really say. The other day I saw this video. And you also have this tap. In Great Britain it's called faucet. The thing is, whenever you travel. And in the other video she says this. And this system is called faucet. Sometimes you can call it tap. Normally you have your tap in the kitchen. This is the faucet. Which one is correct? Neither one is correct. What do Americans really say? Let's get started. In American English, it's called a faucet. For example, the faucet is broken. The faucet is leaking. The faucet is old. I need to buy a new faucet. And it doesn't matter if it's in the kitchen or in the bathroom. It's called a faucet. The filter is not compatible with a the faucet. They don't work together. The filter is not compatible with a faucet. Turn on the faucet, turn off the faucet. Let's practice. In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair a leaky faucet in your kitchen. It is super easy. Is he fixing the faucet in the kitchen? That's right. He is fixing the faucet in the kitchen. And now let's listen to this one. Today, I'm going to show you step by step how to fix a leaking bathroom faucet. Is he fixing the faucet in the bathroom? That's right, he is fixing the faucet in the bathroom. Good job. You might hear an American say a tap, but it's not common. But we say tap water. Remember, water is not countable, so we don't say uh. Tap water. I drink tap water. I don't drink bottled water. What about you? Do you drink tap water? Good job. Or you can say beer and tap. This is what Americans really say. It's called a faucet. I need to buy a new faucet. Do you need to buy a new faucet? Good job. So remember, when talking about your symptoms, in English we always use the article a. Uh. For example, I have a headache. I have a cough. <coughs> I have a runny nose. Remember to use a uh before symptoms. It's not correct to say It's just you have a runny nose. So you say I have a fever. When you have a fever, you take your temperature. It's not correct to say Let me measure your temperature. So remember when you have a fever, you take your temperature. So we say measure the temperature only when we're talking about air temperature. When you're talking about the human body, we always say take. Take your temperature. I think I have a fever. I need to take my temperature. Remember these two important words, cold and flu. If you talk about cold, we say a, uh, a cold. I have a cold. If you say common cold, we say a, uh, a common cold. But if you say flu, we say the flu. I have the flu. I need some medicine because I have the flu. Or I need some medicine because I have a cold. It's not correct to say it could be caused by flu or it could be just common cold. Common cold is what you have. So remember, a cold or the flu. The doctor calls the pharmacy. The doctor calls in the prescription and you pick it up. You pick up your prescription at the pharmacy. We don't say collect your prescription. We say pick up. So I need to pick up my prescription or I need to pick it up. Remember, we don't say I've sent them the prescription. You can collect it right away. We say pick up your prescription or pick it up. Also, avoid using this phrase. So common cold is when you just feel slightly unwell. But that's right, we don't say unwell. We say I feel sick or I'm not feeling well. 
So in America, we don't use unwell. We say, I'm sick, I'm feeling sick, or I'm not feeling well. Let's practice. Does he have a runny nose? Yes, he has a runny nose. Does he have a runny nose? That's right, he has a runny nose. Does she have a headache? Yes, she has a headache. Does she have a headache? That's right, she has a headache. Let's practice. Does he have a cold? Yes, he has a cold. Does he have a cold? That's right, he has a cold. Let's practice. Does he have the flu? Yes, he has the flu. Does he have the flu? That's right, he has the flu. Let's practice. So, he has a fever. Does he need to take his temperature? Yes, he needs to take his temperature. He has a fever. Does he need to take his temperature? That's right, he needs to take his temperature. Let's practice. Can he pick up his prescription today or tomorrow? He can pick up his prescription today. Can he pick up his prescription today or tomorrow? That's right, he can pick up his prescription today. So remember, when talking about symptoms, we use a uh for one. Example, a headache, a runny nose. And remember the two special words, a cold and the flu. And remember, if you have a fever, you take your temperature. And if you need a prescription, you go to the pharmacy to pick it up. This is also not correct. And I would highly recommend you to take this course. It is called How to Speak Like a Native Speaker. It's not correct to say, I recommend you to take. Recommend is a special verb. We have to say, I recommend you take. Let's listen to some examples. I'm going to recommend that you be given a second chance. Sergeant Rollins has recommended that you receive a commendation. <laughs> what is this? And the judge recommended I get one. The wise Dr. Phoenix recommends I take a break. A friend of mine recommended I come here. And he recommended I follow your example. At the end, it was recommended that he be severed from the Air Force, although it was also stated that there was no question whatever as to the lieutenant's loyalty. Recently, the American Medical Association recommended that boxing be banned. Dr. Haycock strongly recommended he be grounded. Wait a minute, are you saying you recommended terminating the MAC? Or you recommended taking me off the MAC team? So remember, the verb recommend is a special verb. So we can say, I recommend you take, or I recommend taking. This is not correct. If you want more materials that you can use while watching my classes, I have a huge, kind of huge workbook. It's over 180 pages. So I highly recommend you to go ahead and purchase this book. It's less than $8 and uh, it will really enhance your learning experience. It's not correct to say, I highly recommend you to purchase it. So what's the best way to use recommend? Well, the best way is to use a gerund. That's an action or a verb with ing at the end. Example, I recommend practicing English every day. There's no other person. I cannot say, I recommend you practicing. It's just one person, me. I recommend this activity. I use gerund to express the activity. I recommend practicing English every day. So, example, I recommend practicing English every day. I can change the action recommend if it's he or she. He recommends. He recommends practicing English every day. Or she. She recommends exercising every day. You can also change recommend to the past. Recommended. He recommended exercising every day. And remember, you cannot say he recommended me exercising. There's no other person. It's just the activity you're talking about. He recommended exercising every day. Let's practice. Do you recommend practicing English every day? Yes. I recommend practicing English every day. Does she recommend practicing English every day? That's right. She recommends practicing English every day. Very good. Now let's practice with recommend if you have another person. For example, my doctor recommended me. We cannot say me. The only time you can say me is if somebody recommended me for the job. If I am the object or I am the thing that is recommended, he recommended me for the job. But in the example, my doctor, 
My doctor recommended I cannot say me. I say I. My doctor recommended I exercise. So we have the person I, we have the action in a simple form, exercise. My doctor recommended I exercise. Why do we say I? Because there's a connector, that. It's an optional connector. You don't have to use it, but you can use it. It makes it easier. My doctor recommended that I exercise more. So remember, you can use the connector that for two ideas. You have the first person I and a simple action. My doctor recommended that I exercise more. Or you can eliminate that. It's optional. My doctor recommended I exercise more is correct. What if the other person is a he or a she? For example, my brother. His doctor recommended that he. I cannot say his doctor recommended him to exercise. I cannot use to in any situation. We use just a simple action. Talking about my brother. His doctor recommended that he. That he exercise. That's right. It's a simple action. I don't change it like he exercises. He exercises is a routine. He exercises sometimes every day. I am not expressing a routine. I'm expressing an action that may or may not happen. So I don't change the action at all. It's always in a simple form. Exercise. So talking about my brother, his doctor recommended that he exercise every day. Exercise in a simple form. What about past? You say recommended. Why not exercised? No, we do not change it to past. It's always in a simple form in this structure. So whether it's present, his doctor recommends, or if it's past, his doctor recommended. The action is always in a simple form with no change. Don't change it to past and don't change it with S for he and she. So again, the example, his doctor recommended that he exercise every day. It is not correct. My doctor recommended that I have to exercise. It is not correct. My doctor recommended that I need to exercise. It is not correct. My doctor recommended that I should exercise. Only my doctor recommended that I exercise every day. Only the simple action is necessary. And remember, the connector that is optional. My doctor recommended I exercise or my doctor recommended that I exercise every day. What if you have a negative idea? For example, my doctor recommended that I not eat sweets. That's right. We use the negative not only. Not don't, only not. So it is not correct. My doctor recommended that I don't eat. You have to say my doctor recommended that I not eat sweets. Now this is a difficult structure and it sounds very strange. So if you don't want to use it, you can say it a different way. You can just use a positive action, avoid. My doctor recommended that I avoid sweets. Easier. And one more thing about this structure. What if the verb is to be? For example, the teacher recommended that we are quiet. I cannot use are. I'm going to use a different form. Be. That's right. Just be. And not to be. Just the verb be alone. So example, our teacher recommended that we be quiet. That's right. She recommended that we be very quiet. Example, the teacher recommended that we be on time. Not we are on time. We use only the verb be. The teacher recommended that we be on time. And if you want to talk about the negative, she recommended that we not be late. Again, she recommended that we not be late. Let's practice. What does your husband recommend? He recommends I eat healthier. What does her husband recommend? That's right. He recommends that she eat healthier. Very good. Let's practice. What did your friend recommend? She recommended that we try that restaurant. What did her friend recommend? That's right. She recommended that we try that restaurant. Very good. Let's practice. 
Do they recommend that we arrive early? Yes, they recommend that we arrive early. Do they recommend that we arrive early? Very good, that's right. They recommend that we arrive early. An example, if I say they recommend you, you can use you to talk about any person. For example, they recommend that you exercise daily. Let's practice. What did your trainer recommend? He recommended that I not eat sweets. What did her trainer recommend? That's right. Her trainer recommended that she not eat sweets. Very good. Let's practice. Did your trainer recommend that you avoid eating sweets? Yeah, he recommended that I avoid eating sweets. Did her trainer recommend that she avoid eating sweets? Very good, that's right. Her trainer recommended that she avoid eating sweets. Let's practice. Does their teacher recommend that they be on time? Yes, their teacher recommends that they be on time. Does their teacher recommend that they be on time? That's right. Their teacher recommends that they be on time. Let's practice. Does their teacher recommend that they not be late on the first day? Yes, she recommends that they not be late on their first day. Does their teacher recommend that they not be late on the first day? That's right. The teacher recommends that they not be late on the first day. Very good. So let's review all the rules when using recommend. The first is use a gerund. It's easier. And you can use it when the person is not important. It's just the activity that's important. For example, he recommends exercising every day. But if the person is important, then remember, don't use me, don't use him. You start a new idea and you use I, he or she, they and we. So he recommends that we exercise or he recommends that I exercise. And remember, the connector that is optional. You don't have to use it. But I recommend using it because it's going to make it easier to use this structure correctly. So my doctor recommended that I exercise every day. What if you talk about a he or a she? His doctor recommends that he exercise. Remember, don't change the action for he and she. And don't change the action for past. It's always in a simple present form. Example, he recommended that I exercise. Recommended is in the past, but exercise is always in the present. And if it's negative, use not. He recommended that I not eat sweets. And if your action is to be, use be only. She recommended that we be on time. Or if it's negative, she recommended that we not be late. And also remember, don't use need to, have to, or should. Just use the action. You cannot say, he recommended that I have to be on time. No have to, no should, and no need to. It's not correct to say, I highly recommend you to purchase it. We have to say, I highly recommend you purchase it. Or... I highly recommend that you purchase it. It's not correct to say, I highly recommend you to check it out. We have to say, I highly recommend you check it out. Or, I highly recommend that you check it out. This is a dozen of eggs. So let's see how to use dozen correctly. A dozen is 12. For one, we say a, a dozen. It's one unit. But it's 12 things. So example, a dozen roses. We cannot say a dozen of roses. Of cannot be used in this case. Only a dozen roses. Or you can say a dozen eggs. Or a dozen donuts. It means 12. What if you have more than 12? Okay, if you have 24, you can say two dozen. I have two dozen roses. Or three dozen, four dozen, five dozen. But we cannot use S here. I cannot say dozens. Even though it's more than one dozen, we cannot put S on dozen. It has to stay singular. Five dozen roses. Three dozen roses. So remember, two dozen roses, well, that's 24 roses. Three dozen roses, that's 36 roses. 
So, can I ever say dozens? Can I ever use the connector of? Yes, you can. If there is no number, you can use dozens of. There are dozens of parks in my neighborhood. There are dozens of parks in my city. That means 36 parks, maybe 48 parks. There are dozens of parks in my city. Let's practice. Do you have a dozen roses? Yes, I have a dozen roses. Does she have a dozen roses? That's right. She has a dozen roses. Let's practice. Do you need to buy two dozen eggs? Yes, I need to buy two dozen eggs. Does she need to buy two dozen eggs? That's right. She needs to buy two dozen eggs. Very good. Let's practice. Did you buy a dozen donuts this morning? Yes, I bought a dozen donuts this morning. Did she buy a dozen donuts this morning? That's right. She bought a dozen donuts this morning. Very good. Let's practice. Are there dozens of parks in your city? Yeah, there are dozens of parks in my city. Are there dozens of parks in her city? That's right. There are dozens of parks in her city. Very good. And these rules that we learned about dozen and how to use dozen correctly also work for other numbers like hundred, thousand, million, billion, and even trillion. Let's look at hundred first. Example, a hundred dollars. If I have two, three, four hundred dollars, I cannot use S and say hundreds. I have to keep it in singular form, hundred, five hundred dollars. And remember, we cannot use of. I cannot say Five hundred of dollars. Five hundred dollars only. Example, I bought a new sofa. It cost seven hundred dollars. So, can I ever say hundreds? Can I use the preposition of? Yes, if there is no number. Example, hundreds of houses were damaged in the storm. There's no number. Two, three, four, five. Just hundreds. Hundreds of houses were damaged in the storm. Let's practice. Did you buy a new sofa? Yeah, I bought a new sofa. How much did it cost? It cost $700. Did she buy a new sofa? How much did it cost? That's right, she bought a new sofa and it cost $700. Very good. Let's practice. How many houses were damaged in the storm? Hundreds of houses were damaged in the storm. How many houses were damaged in the storm? That's right. Hundreds of houses were damaged in the storm. Very good. Let's take a look at thousand. That's right. Thousand is in a singular form when you have numbers. Two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, a hundred thousand. Example, you can't buy a car today for less than twenty thousand dollars. It stays in the singular form. I cannot say thousands and there's no preposition of. You can't buy a new car for less than $20,000. Can I say thousands? Yes, you can say thousands of if there's no number. Example, it took thousands of hours to repair the damage. Again, it took thousands of hours to repair the damage. Let's practice. Can you buy a new car for less than $20,000? No, you can't buy a new car for less than $20,000. Can you buy a new car for less than $20,000? That's right. You can't buy a new car for less than $20,000. Very good. Let's practice. Did it take thousands of hours to repair all the damage? Yes, it took thousands of hours to repair all the damage. Did it take thousands of hours to repair all the damage? That's right. It took thousands of hours to repair all the damage. Very good. What about million? That's right, million too. I cannot say millions. I keep it in a singular form. Three million, four million, ten million, a hundred million. It's always in a singular form. Example, two million trees were planted last year. Two million trees. I cannot say millions if I have a number. And I cannot use the preposition of. Only two million trees were planted last year. Can I ever say millions? Sure, if there's no number. Millions of people, millions of dollars. Example, 
Millions of people are going to vote in the next election. Millions of people are going to vote. Let's practice. How many trees were planted last year in this state? Two million trees were planted in the state last year. How many trees were planted last year in this state? That's right. Two million trees were planted in this state last year. Very good. Let's practice. Are millions of people going to vote in the next election? Yeah, millions of people are going to vote in the next election. Are millions of people going to vote in the next election? That's right. Millions of people are going to vote in the next election. Very good. Today we're going to talk about the correct pronunciation of this word. It's not correct to pronounce it like this. What do you call a person who is incapable of making mistakes or being wrong? Infallible. The correct pronunciation is infallible. Normally, A-L-L -L makes the sound all, like ball, call, and fall. But there are some words that are pronounced differently. They are spelled A-L-L, -L, but they are pronounced A like apple. So the sound is al. Some examples, infallible, challenge, and alligator. These are special words because the pronunciation is different. They're pronounced a, together al. So infallible, what does it mean? It means incapable of making mistakes. So who is infallible? Nobody is infallible. We all make mistakes. We are all capable of making mistakes. So nobody is infallible. Are you infallible? That's right. No, I'm not infallible. I make mistakes sometimes. I'm sure you've heard the rule that the letter T between vowels is pronounced as a fast D. For example, water, better, city. It is true, but it's not always true. Because it's not always true, you might hear this mistake. Uh, when I used to peel potatoes and cucumbers... Potatoes? It's not correct to say potatoes. Or you might hear this mistake. You use it to flatten your pastry. Flatten? It's not correct to say flatten. Why not? Let's take a closer look and see why you can't say potatoes or flatten. Usually, when the letter T is between vowels, we pronounce the letter T as a fast D. Water, better, city. And the reason is because the syllable after the letter T is not stressed. Water. The first syllable is stressed, but the syllable after the letter T is not stressed. Water. I drink a lot of water. Do you drink a lot of water? Good job. I live in a big city. Do you live in a big city or do you live in a small city? Good job. But if the syllable after the letter T is stressed, we pronounce the letter T as T. For example, attend, attach. Attack. Attempt. For example, he was attacked by a dog. And now let's look at these examples. Italy. Italian. Italy. The syllable after the letter T is not stressed. We pronounce the letter T as a fast D. Italy. I've never been to Italy. Have you ever been to Italy? Good job. Italian. The syllable after the letter T is stressed. We pronounce the letter T as T. Italian. I don't speak Italian. Do you speak Italian? Good job. And now let's look at this word. Potato. The first letter T is pronounced as because the syllable after the letter T is stressed. Potato. And the second letter T is pronounced as a fast D. Potato.
because the syllable after the second letter T is not stressed. Potato. I love potatoes. Do you like potatoes? Good job. I use a peeler to peel potatoes. Do you use a peeler or do you use a knife to peel potatoes? Good job. Uh, when I used to peel potatoes and cucumbers with a regular knife, this is a knife. Did she used to use a knife to peel potatoes and cucumbers? That's right. She used to use a knife to peel potatoes and cucumbers. Good job. And here's another word, attitude. The first letter T is pronounced as a fast D because the syllable after the letter T is not stressed. Atti, attitude. And the second letter T is pronounced as T, attitude. It's important to have a good attitude. What do you think? That's right, it's important to have a good attitude. Good job. We can also apply this rule if we have a vowel, R, T, and a vowel. The syllable after the letter T is not stressed. We pronounce the letter T as a fast D. Party, 30, started, dirty. But if the syllable after the letter T is stressed, we pronounce the letter T as T. For example, determine, participate, articulate. So remember, if the syllable after the letter T is stressed, we pronounce it as T, articulate. And if the syllable is not stressed, we pronounce the letter T as a fast D, article. Articulate, article. Certify, certificate. What about this word? Flatten? You use it to flatten your pastry. It's not correct to say flatten. But the syllable after the letter T is not stressed. Why not? Because we have a special rule. In English, we have these words. And they all contain T-E-N or T-O-N. For example, kitten, mitten, written, cotton, button, flatten. And in this case, we pronounce the letter T as a stop T. Put your tongue up and stop the air. Don't release the air. Stop the air. Kitten. So it's a stop T and then it falls into N. Kitten. Kitten. Mittens. Written. Flatten. Cotton, button. So we don't say flatten, we say flatten. She's making bread. She needs to flatten out the dough. Flatten out the dough. Let's practice. Does she need to flatten out the dough? That's right. She needs to flatten out the dough. Good job. So remember these important rules. If the letter T is between vowels or a vowel, R, T, and a vowel, and the syllable is stressed, we pronounce the letter T as T. For example, Italian. If it's not stressed, we pronounce it as D, Italy. And that's why we don't say potato. Uh, when I used to peel potatoes and cucumbers, we say potato. The syllable after the first T is stressed. We pronounce the letter T as T, pate, potato. And the syllable after the second T is not stressed. We pronounce the letter T as D, potato. And we have these words. We pronounce the letter T as a stop T. Cotton, button, kitten, written, flatten. And that's why we don't say flatten. You use it to flatten your pastry. We say flatten. Thank you for watching. And if you want to get your questions or comments noticed, you can join our channel and become a member. And again, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.